Oh. Okay. Are we, we are live streaming, I believe, on Facebook. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Global Business Summit for Startups. We are super excited to bring you today's summit. Um, we've got some amazing guest speakers coming. Uh, we've got some beautiful souls from across the globe dialing in and joining us today. So welcome. Uh, if you are on the live with us or if you're watching the live stream, we would love to know whereabouts in the world are you? Um, please let us know, type into the chat box, let us know where you're, what part of the world you are in. Uh, we've got some people from Orlando, Florida, Brisbane, Australia, we've got Gold Coast, we've got some beautiful souls right across the globe. I think we've got Michelle in the UK who's on the live stream oh, as well. Uh, so welcome aboard everybody. We are so super excited to bring you the summit today. Uh, we do have some amazing guest speakers and I wanted to share with you uh, before we get started that today uh, we will be sharing a few gold nuggets for those of you that are navigating the journey. We've got a couple of guest speakers that are going to share with you what to expect at the startup phase, how to navigate that effectively, what are some of those boxes that you might need to be ticking along your journey and where you can possibly reach out for some extra or assistance. So we will be uh, sharing those beautiful speakers as they come through. Without further ado, I would love to introduce our very first guest speaker, um, somebody who I'm, is one of my favorite people on the planet and business partner in Startup Pro. So please allow me to introduce Lenka Brady to you all. Uh, so Lenka is the co-founder of our Startup Pro uh, business, and she's also the founder of Starter Business LLC. Uh, business, uh, sorry, Lenka has had the beautiful opportunity to work with business owners right across the globe for the last 14 years and helping them navigate their startup journey. So it's something that Lenka is exceptional at. Uh, she understands what is it that business owners actually go through? What are some of the, the hurdles that they have to navigate during that startup phase? So Lenka provides valuable insights to the challenges, the triumphs, helping them navigate that startup process really well. And Lenka's passion actually lies in helping them gu like guide through that daunting journey, but also help them take those initial steps and take their idea from just an idea to a well-crafted, viable business concept. So she really helps people. That's, that's her, her genius area, is helping them actually understand the viability of that business and avoid the, the confusion by providing clarity. Um, and one thing that Link is also amazing at, she's actually tech savvy and she's the brains behind our mobile app platform for Startup Pro as well. So without further ado, please help me introduce and, and welcome to the stage uh, or to your screens, my beautiful partner, uh, Lenka Brady. Welcome. Julie, 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 thank you so very much. Thank you. And thank you to everyone joining us. We're so excited. I am excited. And um, thank you for the beautiful introduction. I am really thrilled to actually join, uh, start off our wonderful summit with something that's as important as market research market analysis. And I will go ahead and dive right in. But first, you mentioned that I'm a little tech savvy and now I'm trying to navigate <laughs> Zoom so I can actually share my screen and share my presentation. So am I able to share my screen yet? Yes, I've just given now. It okay, wonderful, thank you. So if you guys can go ahead and let me know that you are able to view my presentation, that would be very helpful. I'm going to set it up right now, uh, present, here we go. Are you able to see my presentation? Yeah. Yeah, I can see you, fabulous. Um, one housekeeping item, throughout the entire day, we have the chat open as uh, Julie has already used it. Please use it for any questions you may have. If we ask you to engage with us, please do so. If you, if we tell you that we have information to share with you, maybe a URL link with some helpful tips, that's exactly where it's going to be. If you'd like to communicate among each other, please use this time because this is a networking opportunity as well. So the chat is yours, feel free to use it as needed. Um, so I, have a deep passion for anything that has to do with market analysis and mostly because I have failed miserably um, as an entrepreneur when I first started. 
I um I will tell you a story about a Bob, but I was actually the Bob myself. And so Bob is not me in this in this presentation. It is an actual someone, uh, maybe a man, maybe a woman. I don't know. I want to share that with you. But um, this is a story of an incredible human who put their heart and soul into something and that simply didn't pan out. And uh, I was there to watch it and it broke my heart because I knew um, the steps that were missed. We were not connected at that time. So I wasn't able to really connect uh, quick enough to provide some insightful tips. But I figured that with the market research presentation, we open up the summit with some incredibly invaluable or valuable information that every single startup and a business owner that's running in circles and is not able to really figure out why am I not resonating needs to go back to and start from basically ground zero. So uh, let us know, have you done a market analysis before? Is it something that you are familiar with or not? If you can put an emoji inside the chat box, uh, because not everyone understand market, understands market analysis. And since I work with startups, I like to simplify some of the lingo out there because when you say market analysis, market research, it sounds incredibly techy, difficult, overwhelming, intimidating, right? It's it's not very thrilling. It's not anything exciting. And so we tend to put anything that's kind of like boring, intimidating aside. And um, we, we prefer to do the easy things. And that is the downfall of most startups that simply feel like I have all the answers. I know it's it's the right decision. This is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. My family's on board. My friends are on board. Everyone's telling me, go, 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 right? Nobody would want to tell their friends. I don't know if your idea is the right idea. It's, it feels kind of yucky as well. And so the market research part, all I presented as is go and talk to people about your idea. Go and ask the right questions. Find out if there's anyone out there who would be actually willing to pay for your product. It's as simple as that. There are some strategies that we cover in our Startup Pro Academy and some very specific strategies. And a lot of them are actually organic, free, and they have to do, um, they all have to do with simply talking to people. Uh, but today I will talk about more about the philosophy and the mental toll that it may take on a business owner if you skip the step. So let's go ahead and meet Bob as I'm working on advancing my slide. So. Bob is a phenomenal human being, hardworking, enthusiastic, passionate, incredible entrepreneur. He was an idea, believes in this idea, and has just now put nine months, 12 months, one year into developing his idea. So most of you here, and if you have not yet developed anything, you will have to really work on a website, social media presence. If you have a product, product development, hiring a marketing agency, possibly on creating videos for you, right? Taking pictures, all of that costs money. Plus the time that you put into developing your product. So think about when you are putting nine, 10, 12, 11 months into something so incredible, you're finally ready to launch. You launch with a wonderful launch party. All of your family and friends are there to support you and, and really rally behind you. And then after you launch and all this excitement, all of a sudden nothing and it's crickets. And what happens? All of a sudden you realize like, oh my gosh, what, what am I missing? How is it that I am not resonating? All of my time, money, work, passion, everything I put into it is simply not bringing anything back to me. There is absolutely zero profit in anything I've just done. Your life savings are gone. Your family probably is now wondering what the heck just happened. So your whole journey took a very unexpected turn, right? And that's just because Bob, you, or anyone decided to skip market analysis because they felt like they knew better, right? 
everything look good on paper except for your dream reality and the reality of the real world did not align, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean, does not necessarily mean that your idea is bad. What it simply means is that you are, or Bob is talking to the wrong people or the wrong market, right? And that is what the market analysis will help you uncover. You will find out what really is resonating with the right people. If the product is good and you find out that you have people out there who are willing to buy it through the market analysis, you will figure out there are strategies. You will figure out what it means for you and how to connect with the right people. However, if you do not do all the right things, things if you do not if you skip this very important step the emotional toll that it takes on you or bob right now is that you realize that you're a failure and it's a very very difficult process to really process it's a very difficult feeling to process you go from euphoria and excitement to being completely deflated and um, your big dream of success is now replaced by feelings of failure and self-doubt. And you're sitting at home thinking, why me, why me? What, what just happened? It's a roller coaster of emotions, right? And it, starting a business is a roller coaster, roller coaster of emotions as is. However, um, when you go from realizing your dream to understanding that perhaps or feeling that perhaps you don't have what it takes to be an entrepreneur, the consequences are real. The consequences are dire because you've just depleted your savings account. You've just, um, your mindset is uh, completely the opposite of what it was nine months ago. And now it's going to be that much more difficult to recover. So when you start a business, it's not just understanding the business steps, but it's really focusing on your mindset and the wellness of well-being um, that goes along with building a uh, valid, um, uh, validated business idea and turn that into a business. So when you're sitting at home and wondering, why not me? Why not me? Instead of that, if you go back to the basics and really do and connect with your audience through market analysis, you might figure out that it's not that why it's not me you will figure out that it's simply that you have been talking to the audience the wrong way, that you have been um, talking to the wrong market the entire time. So skipping the market analysis is absolutely 100% the biggest mistake that startup and entrepreneurs make. And that's when people realize, or entrepreneurs of Bob in our case, that the ideas in your head, as unique as they might sound, perhaps, perhaps are not as unique in the real world. You realize that you may have to tweak your ideas slightly because there's enough competition out there that's doing something very similar. There is a need, but you may have to target your need, meaning you find your people and you talk to your people directly to their pain points. Failing in startup is a very difficult pill to swallow, uh, um, especially uh, at the very beginning. And it takes a very strong individual to recover. So again, your idea might necessarily be a bad idea. It may just be that you may have to shift slightly. And you may be able to continue, but if you stop yourself halfway through the point, instead of going all the way in and then closing the shop and walking away from your dream, what is the guarantee that you will come back? So now we're going full circle. Wanting to start a business is an amazing feeling. And we at Startup Pro, that's all we talk about. We talk about this amazing feeling, what you do with it and how you nurture it. But with that, there is a process that goes along with it. And with the process is following specific steps. Validating your business idea is the first one. You don't want to end up like Bob where you have depleted, like I said, your finances. And now, even though you have a new, better view of, you've learned some lessons, you have a better idea of how to run your business, you may not have the finances anymore. Your reputation may be ruined. You may still have the right product, but if you have put the right product 
out there in the wrong way, it might have affected your business reputation. And now people might not actually believe in what you're telling them because they have seen you fail the first time. So doing it the right the first time is absolutely critical. You may still do some little missteps and tweaks along the way, and that's absolutely okay. As an entrepreneur, you have to be adaptable and you have to be able to navigate the landscape. However, um, placing your excitement on just launching versus placing the excitement on doing the right things in business, especially in startup, are two completely different things. The financial toll we just talked about. The mental toll is um, something that might be even more difficult to recover from. The feeling of being disappointed, lost along the way, stressed completely. It's a range of emotions. And Julie will have a presentation on business mindset and what it actually, what is required, what is needed for you to sustain, right? Some of the blows and apologies for the dings. Um, what, what you need to do to be able to cope or develop your coping mechanisms. If you do everything the right way, the coping mechanisms come slightly easier because, you know, I'm doing things right. So maybe I just have to work on what's in here, right? Putting yourself in a place of failure. Think about any instance this week, if you failed and something, how long did it take you to shake it off? Was it five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Was it a day? Can you imagine if it's a process of nine months of hard work, missed opportunities because you're laser focused on launching your business and you're so excited. So you're not paying attention to anything else that's going on around you. You promised to your family you were taking their money and savings and you will pay them back. And now you can't. And now you have, um, now you, you are at the point that not only that you can pay back, but you really don't know what to do with yourself. So you become withdrawn from society. You lose your own personal identity because you don't know where you fit in on this market anymore. And new opportunities, you may not even see them because you're so closed in with this overwhelming sense of failing. So that is what happens if you are skipping just that one very important essential step. And to actually go into the details of how to conduct market research, market analysis, anything that has to do with finding out who your people are, where your audience is, where they're hanging out, how to connect with them. If you skip all of that, right? you really are putting yourself in a place of some severe consequences and danger, and it may be very difficult to recover from that. And we want to prevent it here. Not only that we're just allowing you to get in the mindset of, okay, 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 this is what I need to do. And if I don't know how, um, I can simply start asking questions. Would you be willing to pay for my product? How much would you be willing to spend? If not, why not? What about my product is not uh, something that you like? What don't you like about my product, my service? Is there any competition, right? And we teach all of that in our Startup Pro Academy from A to Z, understanding your audience. And really, um, if you understand and know how to uncover what your ideal audience wants, connecting with them, will almost help you become like a, uh, connected with them will be almost like a, will be effortless, you know, second nature. It's going to be like, you're talking to your people, like I'm talking to you right now, right? My presentation is not about the technical stuff. I, my presentation is all about allowing you to, or helping you to understand what happens to you as a human being when you're launching your business, if you're skipping the most essential steps in this process. So my people are, as a startup strategies, my people are people that are starting a business. So how will I speak to them? In a very plain language, not to dummy things down. I don't have to come up with big words and make it sound like it's unattainable. Let's do market research, right? I need to be relevant, relatable. So in my line of business, I have to be able to explain some of the technicalities 
in a very simple language that any regular mom, dad, um, you know, people out there, they're in corporate world deciding to start a business or simply have been born at home raising children, they're ready to do something different. They can understand, they can relate to me. And that is because I know my audience. So if Bob knew his audience, he probably would have been able to identify who his target audience, his people are, he would be able to target them, meaning he would be able to know, or he would be better able to know where to reach them and where to target them. His failure was that he launched to the masses, to everyone, because he thought that the business was good for everybody. Not one product is good for everybody, for everyone. Right. There's always that very specific niche, small group that you need to find and work with. You find their language. So you speak in the same language. I just talked about it. And the word and the words and the messaging through your marketing and even through meeting them in, in meetings and um, uh, networking events and doing online videos, you will be able to use the same words that they need to hear so they can actually understand what it is that you're telling them. People can buy from you if they don't know that you exist. And that means that if they don't know that you exist, they're not hearing you. You're not going to find them where they hang out. People won't buy from you if they don't understand what it is that you're selling. What is your product about? I don't understand what you're telling me. And that's what happened to Bob. The product looked beautiful on paper. I actually saw it in you know real world. I, have, I had absolutely no clue what it was doing and how it was going to help me help me do things easier, solve my problems. I might have possibly looked into it if it was done slightly differently, but there was a complete disconnect. And that's what market research will help you achieve. It will give you the answers to these questions. It'll give you clarity, right? So you know your voice, you know how to talk to your people, you know who your people are, your target audience, you know where they are, you know how to speak to them, but it'll also give you the confidence to go and talk to them because you have something that they need and you know that you have something that they need. So for me, it really doing target research and we did it with Julie, even with Startup Pro, um, it was intimidating. And I, I simply didn't wanna have anything to do with it. And that's why I failed at the very beginning of my career. Came from a high level corporate level executive well, pardon me, middle management. I like to put myself up on a pedestal at, at times. But I, I thought I knew it all. And I sure did not. I, I failed miserably. And it's okay. I am very grateful for that experience personally because it helped me realize that no, Lenka, you do not know it all. You have to learn. You have to educate yourself. And you have to listen to other people and maybe look up to people that have done it before and are more successful. So I surround myself by people that are more successful than me so that I can learn from them. And I didn't know that initially. I didn't think that I needed that initially. Now or later, I discovered the incredible power behind understanding my customers' deepest needs and desires. And so I'm going to close this presentation with this. When you really grasp what makes your customers tick, you will be able to position your offer as the one and only solution that your customers will look for. It's the one and only solution to their problems. It's the one and only solution, a logical choice in their eyes. And how cool is that? The one and only logical choice in their eyes. So gaining clarity around your people, your target audience, your messaging and the words that you use to connect with them or in your offers through online, whatever um, offers, digital offers in person, it will make you feel so confident in yourself that speaking to people about their pain points and connecting with them will, like I said, feel like second nature, completely effortless. And so that is the power and beauty of doing market analysis. And if I can ask you one last question, 
and I want to hear you all say it out loud and you don't have to be on a speaker. What if you have done it already? Great. If you have not and or if you're launching a new business, what will you never skip? I want to see your words, mouth. Market research. <laughs> market research, market analysis. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Um, all right. That would be a brief uh, introduction. Stay tuned for Julie's presentation because Julie will talk, we'll talk slightly more about the business mindset that has to do with building a business. And um, I am so incredibly excited. I have to get out of my own presentation over here. Uh, you can probably see my screen right now, right? So I'm going to stop sharing it. Yeah. And um, just we... a quick note on that one for our next speaker. If anybody is using a prompter, uh, just double check if your prompter is on a hidden screen. We were able to, and I didn't want to interrupt your beautiful presentation, Lenka, but we were able to see your prompter on the main screen. Um, however, that's what happens in real life in business is we, you know, we have these technical issues that happen. Um, so I, I want to fill you all with confidence that, you know, these things are going to happen in business. You will have technical issues and bits and pieces that come, come through. So um, these are great lessons learned in any business that you do. Um, we had a tech support here, guy here yesterday for about two hours and uh, we were trying to live stream directly into our Facebook page. So there's always, you know, technical issues that you will have during uh, your, your business journey. So, uh, but Lenka, thank you so much for sharing that because you really did share some valuable, valuable information about doing the research, doing the analysis. Um, I just want to gauge from the audience who here has had a failed product before. Who here has launched something and not done the research before? So, yeah, fantastic. So it's it's great. Uh, Lenka, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but please. Continue. No, not at all. Not at all. And you know what, you guys, I'll tell you this. I, um, I use the prompter for absolutely everything. It is my, this is the way I, uh, it's my confidence, right? Sometimes you need that third leg to be stable. Um, I have it. It's there. And I rarely stick to it. I um, and so for me again, if I have uh, if I coach and guide my uh, entrepreneurs through their fear of speaking publicly or talking about anything, I said just put it out there. It's not a big deal. It's all about how you present it. It's not like you reading it. So for me, the fact that you saw it actually is even better because now you can see that even with the teleprompter, I was not really close to it whatsoever. I was kind of scrolling up and down because I was going over my head and my notes and everything that I had um, practiced. So it's it's a, uh, for anyone in the startup world, it's it only shows that having your security blanket with you is absolutely okay. And I'm proud of it. I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me. And I'm so actually happy that it happened because we're all human. And if having a teleprompter makes me feel better about putting myself out there and sharing my wisdom and connecting with you and talking to you about my passions, my business, then let it be, right? It is not a sign of weakness whatsoever. And um, I, I would hope that no one would even consider it that way. So if things like that ever happen to you in the real world, embrace it. Embrace it because you're special, you're unique, you're amazing. And if this is how you have to go about doing your business, so what? So what? Your audience will get to see my peeps, my startups will get to see that, hey, you know what? Lenka is real too. And if she needs her teleprompter, then that's that's what it is. So I, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it was actually kind of cool to see for all of you where I was with the teleprompter totally off <laughs> and even with my slides. So good stuff, good stuff. So... Uh, but now I believe that we have our next guest speaker, our wonderful Kira. Kira, are you um, going to be uh, sharing slides? If you can, you are, right? You have your presentation. Okay, wonderful. And uh, Julie, the only thing I know from you, my friend, I, I don't have the capability to give everyone the screening to show. Um, uh, to get so everyone has screen share capacity. So if you've got some slides, that's absolutely fine. Okay, wonderful. 
So let me go ahead and introduce our next speaker. Kira and I actually met at a private Facebook group, um, and I'm not using teleprompter right now, just so you guys know. <laughs> and it was just absolutely wonderful to me, just a like-minded entrepreneur, wonderful hustler, right, mompreneur. Um, I um, just just love, love the mompreneur group, and uh, I was impressed with uh, Kira's knowledge. First of all, your demeanor, we spoke on the phone a few times and emailed, and I Love your warmth, even though your expertise is so highly technical and over my head. Um, and, and so I so appreciate very much that you um, agreed to join us today. Kira is a veteran human resources and payroll uh, professional, I'm reading now, who began serving startups when she saw the need of entrepreneurs to learn the ins and outs of building their business and paying themselves and eventually employees. Her wealth of knowledge on compliance and payroll will assist you navigating the process of establishing and growing your business. So Kira, thank you so much again for joining us. The floor is yours. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the warm welcome. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so I, as she said, you know, I'm over here helping operate our own small business. Um, for, for many years now. Uh, and so I've definitely learned a lot, uh, having been first a uh, professional in large organizations and then getting to move on and actually grow and uh, service our own small business and then be a consultant to others. So thank you so much. It's just an honor to, to be here to talk about all these things that entrepreneurs have to think about uh, when they're starting their business. And I use notes too, everyone. It's always a good idea. <laughs> um, all right, so you start in a business. These are all the basics that we're gonna go over for what do you need? What are the foundational items to set yourself up for success? Um, so that way you have all the professionals and all the resources in your corner. So the first thing is always about the formation. So when you're talking about your formation of your business, I'll go ahead and say spoilers. This is where later in the um, presentation, it's about who your support team is. Your tax professional is gonna be key in order to make sure that you're looking at your specific situation. Because just because someone else did it one way, just because your friend started a business and did it that way, doesn't mean it's good for you. And so it's always, always so important to have someone look at your personal tax situation and how you're forming your business. And of course, legal to help you actually get those paperwork in place uh, for some of those items. Uh, so what are some of the options? There's other smaller things out there, but these are the kind of the, the heavy hitters, the big ones that people talk about. Uh, your sole proprietorship. This is gonna be the simplest and most common structure. Um, it's, it offers full control of your business, but it lacks any kind of separation between your personal and your business liabilities. So you're automatically, so you're automatically considered a sole proprietorship if you don't do anything. So if you don't go out there and file any paperwork for a corporation or anything along or an LLC, this is what you are. You're a sole proprietorship. Uh, but again, it doesn't always make sense because you're not going to have any separation between your business and personal liabilities. It can be a good choice for low-risk businesses or someone who may be just starting out to kind of test the market. Uh, but it might not be what you want to stay at or, or even start out again, very specific to each individual situation and what kind of business you're in. Um, you might have a partner. So you might have a partnership or multiple partners. And so there are some subsets in this general partnership, limited liability. It's all going to determine what kind of paperwork you're going to put in place. Uh, in order to do the, the formation. Some of them require formal paperwork that you have to file and others don't. But no matter which, which one you have to do, which one you've decided on doing, it's always a best practice to do a partnership agreement. That's gonna be the thing that kind of helps protect all parties, even if you're not you know, having to file for a formation um, with a government entity. So an LLC is our next one, uh, a limited liability company. Uh, what this option is, it combines some of those aspects of partnerships and corporations, which I'll talk about in just a moment, um, providing some liability protection uh, between the um, your personal 
and your business. And so this is the thing that is really very, very common for people to, to form. Um, and it can be a single member, just yourself, or it can be a partner, you know, multiple member partnership, essentially. Um, great protections and something that you should definitely look into as you either start your business or you're growing. So corporation, it's um, an entity, a legal entity um, that you file paperwork for, for the formation. Um, and it offers liability protection, but also there's now corporate taxes. Uh, so it, it is different in that sense. Um, and it can be further divided into your S and C Corp. C Corp is gonna be mostly a large business um, or certain industries uh, will might go into this if they're going to be um, growing in a certain manner. Uh, very, usually much more complex tax requirements are involved. Um, what most startups are probably gonna see and look at and consider is the S Corp. Uh, it's suitable for small businesses, that want to avoid the double taxation that can happen in the US. Um, the income passes through to the shareholders, um, personal tax returns. Um, and therefore, because it goes through to their personal tax returns, it avoids double taxation. Um, I've experienced and seen many LLCs go through the process of designating themselves an S-Corp with the IRS um, in order to take advantage of that pass through um, taxation. Uh, yeah, very, very common and a, and a great way to, a great thing to talk about with your tax professional if it's a right fit for you. And of course, there's out there the nonprofits. So a corporate nonprofit, again, a charitable education or social causes where you filed and been approved for tax exempt status. Really with any of these, um, it's striking the right balance between what's the benefits and the legal protections that the different formations offer. Um, and there's tons of other resources out there. So you definitely wanna have your individual tax and legal professionals help guide you. Uh, but for your own education, the Small Business Administration and the IRS both have some really great resources in order to provide details on which forms you file, which ones might be best in what situation. And so you educate yourself so you can ask some questions to your tax professionals. So what's next on your basics list? Um, banking. Go ahead, just do it. Get a business banking from the beginning. You might start out where it's not complicated and it wouldn't be too much of a hassle to actually separate out your business and your personal um, I, you know, transactions, but it's still gonna be extra work. And if you end up growing much more than you thought you would and there's more transactions and more things in one account that is business and personal, it really could create a big headache. So my best advice, start from the beginning, just having a business bank account after you've you know, formed your business. Um, get some basic liability insurance in place too. Another way to mitigate risk and protect yourself and your business is a, it's really a great thing. Of course, if you have employees, there's additional insurances out there for employee liability, as well as workers' compensation. So it's another thing, you know, again, all about reducing your liability and risk um, should something happen. Another thing you want to do um, really early on uh, in your business and what in, is mission vision values. So actually writing down, taking the time to decide why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I going out spending all this effort to start a business, to deliver a new product or service to the market? Um, what are your values? All these things, define them early and they can be your guide map for everything that you're gonna go through. Every business decision, you can go back and say, does this, does this suit my mission? Does it uphold the values that I'm trying to do to serve my customers? And it really can help you guide, You know, maybe you shouldn't do that extra service. Maybe it doesn't serve your mission or you need to update your mission because you things have changed and you have new opportunities. And so it's a really great guide map and something I highly recommend doing. Um, Next, a business plan. Even if you don't need to present some kind of business plan for financial reasons, again, it's one of those really great things to do as an exercise at least, um, put the effort into a basic business plan so you really understand your business very, very intimately and from a technical standpoint as well. And then if you do have to go to a bank um, or an investor or something like that, you've already got the bones in place. You're already ready to go. Um, so highly recommend that you, you take a little time and at least get something basic started for yourself. 
Up next, I've already alluded to having your support team. This is, this is the cornerstone. This is the thing that everything else revolves around. All the other resources, all the other things you're doing, you just you should not go it alone. Um, there are so many things to know about running a business. You can't possibly know them all. And so finding really great professionals that can consult and educate you, in addition to doing some of the actual you know, technical work, is really key to your success. Um, so you'll have wonderful coaches and, and guides that you can um, go like Startup Pro Academy, you know, people that can actually get you through a lot of these items and lead you. And then you have these, these are your other support team members, someone that understands the financial tax and accounting implications of everything that you do. Not only gets your taxes filed, but helps you make some financial decisions. And so you don't put yourself in a place where, you know, you're gonna be hurting in the future. Uh, legal is actually really, really important. So many people, they just they go into business and you know, it's, it's small, there's nothing. This contract is small. I don't need, you know, I can read it over or maybe not even all of it um, because there's so much lingo, uh, legal jumbo in it. You really should have someone look at it. Everything that you do, um, every contract that you put out there for someone else or that you sign for vendors or maybe supplies or something along those lines, knowing what's going on could save your business. Um, you definitely want to have legal representation looking at your stuff for you. Um, to go along with the financial and bookkeeping, um, I separate out bookkeeping because it's more of a day-to-day -day type thing. So, or month to month, you know, it's something that occurs on a regular basis of reconciliation and making sure that nothing is a mess. Your tax professional will be happy if you have a great bookkeeper. Uh, someone that's going to make sure that all of your transactions are in the right categories. So that way you know your cash flow. You can produce profits and loss statements, know all your assets and liabilities. So again, something that's really important there. Um, and of course, a great marketing team, someone that can help you be visible to your uh, customers. Uh, essential resources, these are the things that you and your professionals are gonna be using. So your accounting platform, something, um, there's great ones out there like QuickBooks and Xero. Uh, don't just use a spreadsheet, do it right from the beginning so that way you've set yourself up for success. Online presence, uh, show your customer that you can, they, they can trust you because you're, you have a presence across multiple platforms. You have a website, you have your Google business profile, you're on the social media channels. Consistency, and the same thing with your brand. Build your brand, be consistent, it builds trust with your customer base. Next, you guys, obviously you're paying people, you're paying yourself. Make sure you make a plan with your um, financial professionals to actually pay yourself. You're doing all this work, you need to have something out of it. Um, and of course, how you formed your business will determine exactly whether you're taking distributions and a dis or distributions and a wage. Your contractors, make sure you get W-9s from the beginning. Um, so you don't have to hunt them down in the future. Make sure your contracts are giving you invoices and receipts. You know, have those things in place. It seems simple at the beginning, but when you're trying to hunt it down at tax season, it's a mess and it'll give you a big headache. And of course, if you have employees, get a full service payroll platform. You'll thank me later. They automatically file and pay your payroll taxes. You do not want to miss those deadlines. Oop. And of course, I clicked the wrong place and it went way ahead of me. Um, if you do become an employer, congratulations. There is so much more on your plate now. Um, you want to make sure that you plan accordingly before you even hire, budget, know exactly what you're, what and why you're doing that for your growth. So you have a plan. Um, pay attention to work with classification. That's a big thing um, for the U.S. state and um, federal entities. Um, you really got to make sure that you're on top of that and know that these, where this contractor is, where this employee of course, all the management that comes with an employee. And this is where you can really um, add to your support team with someone that can help you know what all those compliance things are, as well as some of the day-to-day -day management. What do I do to take care of my employees? And what do I do if there's a problem? And of course, all of the compliance, as I iterated, this is, again, support team is key because you have all these registrations for all of these. You have registration processes, filing process, tax deadlines. Um, sometimes estimated tax payments, reporting requirements, 
Uh, which forms do you file based on your business formation? Uh, all these things, what can you take as tax credits and deductions uh, for your business expenses? What the tax codes are always changing. It really, I just can't say it enough. Don't wait to start with an accounting team, someone that can guide you through these pieces. In the end, there is so much power in surrounding yourself with the right professional support team. So do not go it alone. And so I just want to say thank you so very much for your time. I just, I love getting to be here and share um, with you because again, we've, we've been on that journey in our business um, starting up. And so I just appreciate the time. Thank you so much, Kira. I do have one small question there. Um, so for those of us that are not in the US, what is a W-9? Oh, goodness. So when you a W-9 form is collecting the information for that business. So you can actually file with the um, with the IRS for um, what you've paid them. Um, so it has to do with a bunch of tax filings. And it's something that you use for vendors and contractors. Gotcha. Thank you so much. That was a brilliant presentation and uh, such crucial information I think going from the very beginning and starting off on the right foot is so super crucial for any business. And you dropped some really gold nuggets in there, which I'll wait until I come. I'll, I'll revisit some of them when I when I do my presentation. So I'll hand back to Lenka for our hosting. Uh, thank you, Kira. That was amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am um, actually, I, uh, when we were building the summit, I, I was wondering how to set up the presentation so they would have a logical sense. And I, um, I think we did a really good job because now uh, we have Tracy coming in and Tracy will go straight into um, helping you understand where you can get help for all the stuff that you just mentioned. And I also met Tracy inside the Mompreneur Group, and we've we've done some business together. Tracy is an incredible human being, wonderful businesswoman, serial entrepreneur as well, and also a good a dear friend of mine. And uh, she is a seasoned Legal Shield Independent Associate, and she will guide us through the maze of legal intricacies that often challenge small business owners. And in Tracy's presentation, we will talk about the critical importance of affordable legal access. Legal access, I think, is the key word for entrepreneurs and startups. And uh, Tracy will share practical strategies to help you navigate the complex legal landscape in entrepreneurship, empowering you to make even more informed and proactive decisions for your business's day-to-day -day legal needs. And I have to say, I am actually Tracy's client customer as well. And I have used this service many times already in my, in my business. So I'm so thrilled to have you here, Tracy. Kyra, Kira, thank you so very much again. Um, I have questions for you as well. Follow up, what maybe offsite, uh, some good stuff there, which resonated with me. So I have some catching up to do with my business as well. But here's the floor, uh, Tracy. Uh, it's all yours. And Julie, if you would be so kind and allow her uh, to share a screen, that would be great. Because I think Tracy, you have a few slides, right? I do have a few slides. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful, awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for welcoming me. Um, you know, I have a little bit of time here. Thank you for that. <laughs> I have a little bit of time here to share with you, um, as Lenka said, an affordable way that you can have access to one of probably the most important uh, aspects of starting a business, and that's the legal services industry. Um, now, I know when we get started as, uh, you know, in our new startup business, we're super excited. Uh, there's you know, somebody had an idea, a vision, whether you just got an opportunity to have that vision come to fruition or whether you're a serial entrepreneur, it, there's so much excitement, but we always have to be mindful that uh, with business comes a lot of things that we need to be extremely mindful for. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and share my screen right now um, and get into that a little bit. Let me know if you can see my screen. Can you all see my screen? Thumbs up, yeah. perfect. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, so, well, you know, 
as business owners, we have, you know, we know how to potentially operate our business. Um, but do we really understand how to legally navigate all that goes into building and starting a business? Of course not. We can't possibly know everything uh, and run our business at the same time. So um, we definitely have to surround ourselves with a team of people that can help navigate us through those legal waters to help our businesses not only survive, but really thrive. Um, so whether you're a startup company or you're seasoned in business, you know, there are many things that we need to be mindful of. And these are just a few of them, right? When we are starting a business, um, Kira mentioned that legal entity formation, that's probably one of the most important uh, aspects of your business to be mindful of when you're starting, choosing the right structure. This is actually one of the most uh, biggest areas where businesses fail to, um, you know, kind of fall out because of the, the business entity structure. What about intellectual, really intellectual property protection? Securing our trademarks, our copyrights, our patents, you know, having contracts and document review you know, they say the bold print give it and the fine print take it away. Before we put our name to anything, doesn't it make sense to have an attorney review those documents to make sure that they're working in our best interest and our small business's best interest? What about those compliance and, uh, you know, compliance and regulations, making sure that we are following the letter of the law, whether it be um, local, state or federal? Employment law is super important. As a startup business, you want to make sure that you're understanding and you're complying with every letter of the law. Taxation is super important, understanding the tax obligations that you have as a business owner. Uh, just because we open up our doors and say, hey, I have a business today, we wanna make sure that we have our taxes in order um, because the IRS is one government repository that you don't wanna mess with here in the United States. Um, what about funding and securities laws? Data protection and privacy. This one is super important too, because as business owners, we have to be mindful of the protection and collection of our customers' information. If we have employees of our employee information, that's super important. What about when we get to that stage where we need to lease real estate? Managing and mitigating risk. Here in the United States, they say we live in Sioux, USA. Everyone, you know, accidents happened and everyone is quick to pull the trigger and, and take someone to court. A quick story, and I just it just happened today. A gentleman came to me almost in tears. And it was sad to see because he's a small business owner. Uh, he's an inspector and he neglected to put something in his inspection report. Well, now that homeowner is suing him or potentially going to sue him. Um, he's working with his E&O insurance, but if his E&O insurance does not want to pay out, who is he going to need to call, especially an attorney? Attorney's going to help him navigate through that, you know, a potential legal situation with having to pay back, he said, almost $14,000, which he does not have, which could potentially put his business out of commission, um, you know, going through a legal challenge. Dispute resolution, hopefully, you know, now that he has access to affordable legal, um, you know, services, he can get the resolution and help negotiate maybe on his behalf a better outcome uh, in that situation. What about having access to cash flow? As small business owners, every dollar counts. So we wanna make sure that those contracts are structured properly to make sure they're working in our best interest. We wanna put policies in place. And what happens if a uh, customer does not wanna pay what they owe? We can't possibly run our business effectively if we don't have that constant cash flow coming in. So that's super important to be mindful of and certain something certainly that an attorney can assist you with. Now, on a small business budget, how do we as business owners legally protect our day-to-day -day business? Um, you know, as small business owners, we can have those big business problems, but without those big business resources. And as I mentioned, one legal situation can potentially devastate and put us out of business. So we definitely want to be mindful of that. Blanka mentioned Legal Shield. This is a company that I've been partnering with for um, several years because I, I, I work with them to help me through some challenging situations myself. So I found out firsthand the power of having access to affordable legal access. Now, this is the company here. It was founded in 1972. So this is not a fly-by-night company. It's a company that's been in business for almost 52 years now, um, protecting and empowering approximately four and a half million lives all across the United States and five provinces in, in Canada. 
and 140,000 businesses, all on a voluntary basis because there are no long-term contracts or commitments that lock anyone into using these services, legal situations. This is a life legal events plan. So as we are going through our day-to-day, -day, we should be able to, you know, something doesn't sit right in our stomach or we say to ourselves, is that even legal? We can simply contact Legal Shield um, through the power of a mobile app too, um, to make it simpler, easier for us to be able to do that we can have access. And I love the mission behind this company, right? To provide equal access to the liberty, opportunity, equality, and justice that every human being deserves. Now, I'm going to say nice things, but we've been uh, written up by reputable companies like Forbes, CNBC, Yahoo, fin uh, Yahoo Finance, Bloomberg, just to name a few. I, I would need a whole other screen to list all of the publications, uh, but I don't have a lot of time here. So, what if a business owner could have that unlimited consultation and advice for all business matters? Would it be beneficial? And you can just show hands. Would it be beneficial for you to be able to have that access, knowing that you can tap an app or uh, pick up the phone and call, call an attorney to find out you know, what your rights are in any situation? That's powerful. And if somebody needs one of those motivational letters or a phone call, uh, an attorney, how, how powerful is it to have an attorney write a letter on your business's behalf on their legal letterhead, you know, with the, all of the uh, attorneys on the top and all of the officers along the side. How much more powerful is that than us trying to do that in an email or, or, or on our loose leaf paper? It just um, is a better connection to know that you have a law firm or legal team all across the United States and in Canada to help you on your behalf. Right. These are just some of the, the, the reasons why um, business owners could use affordable legal access, right? And pay by the month, not by the hour. This is what makes Legal Shield so special. So how many of us know how expensive attorneys can be, right? Three, four, five hundred dollars an hour. Well, Legal Shield took a, 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 an old system and made it simpler, easier, and more affordable for us to have access to the attorneys that um, you know, we all can use. Think about it. Big businesses, they don't do anything without having their attorneys you know, look at those contracts, give them advice. Why not start up businesses and small business owners like you and I have that same access to attorneys? Well, now you can by, by accessing this service and again, pay by the month rather than the hour. Now, I just wanted to put on the screen just some of the, you know, the plans. Legal Shield can tailor a business plan to suit your needs. So at our most comprehensive plan, having access to an attorney with all of the things that you see here listed, for for a dollar six an hour for a forty hour work week, that's what I mean by affordable. So think about it: if a, if a, a, a traditional business attorney costs three, four, five business attorneys actually more upwards of a thousand dollars here in the United States per hour, and they bill you. You know, sometimes you feel like this when you call an attorney. It's how can I bill you rather than how can I serve you? But having access to Legal Shield because of the collective buying power. They are, how can I serve you? And at $1.06 an hour for our most comprehensive plan, you can have this service at the most comprehensive plan for an entire year and still might not match up for what it would cost for two or three hours of an attorney's time in the traditional sense. So that's value here that I wanted to show you um, today. And if you are a startup business and you are the sole proprietor of your business, sorry about that, we also have a home business supplement that can be added onto our our family legal plan. So you can protect your family as well as your business um, and have access to the same legal services that everyone um, has. I wanted to point out something um, here on the screen where you see life events, having your will, living will, healthcare and financial powers of attorney in place as a business owner. This is super valuable because we work so hard to start up the business, to run the business. What happens should some, you know, should you know, we get uh, incapacitated or something happens to us. What happens to our business? This is something that we all want to be mindful to make sure there's a smooth transition, right? Because employees need to be paid. If you have employees, who's going to run the business? If you have a partner, you want to make sure your partner understands uh, how that business is going to be run, how it's going to be take over, how the vendors are going to be paid and so forth. So that's why it's super powerful, powerful to have access to an attorney uh, for both your business as well as your personal life as well. 
Now, I mentioned having access to an attorney can be simple, easy, and affordable through Legal Shield. If you're not mobile centric, no worries at all. Um, you can have access to Legal Shield right through the um, web portal or simply pick up the phone the good old fashioned way as well. That works too. Um, but I know in this digital DNA, having, you know, access to your attorney in the palm of your hand right through your phone, which is probably the biggest real estate location, 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 having access right here to your attorney. is like having an intercom to your attorney right in the palm of your hands with Legal Shield. Now, these are just some more of the, the um, current membership examples that people are using this for, because I wanted you to see that it's not just um, in the beginning that you need it, but it's throughout the whole process of your business. Legal situations happen every single day, day to day, as you're running your business. So again, if something doesn't feel right, or if you want to know if something's legal, the law is not always logical, right? What we think is a logical situation might not be a legal situation. So we definitely want to make sure that we have access to reputable attorneys. Now, I'm sure many people are saying, okay, this sounds great. Well, what kind of attorneys are, or do you get with a legal shield? Well, Legal Shield has partnered with um, attorney law firms rather all across the United States and Canada, and they have an average of 22 years of tenure with the law with Legal Shield, and the attorneys are AV and AB rated according to Martindale Humble, which is the go-to for all things legal uh, when it comes to judging um, the reputation and business of an attorney here in the United States. So they are well vetted attorneys that can assist you and ready and willing to assist you at just the tap of an app. So I want to thank you all for for allowing me to just share just a little bit with you today about how um, how you can have affordable legal access. You know, Benjamin Franklin said an ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure. Business attorneys provide consultative and uh, proactive to new, you know, experiences for new entrepreneurs about the basics of starting a business, success of successfully running a business. And, you know, there's a statistic that says about 70% of all businesses fail within the first seven years. We don't want that to be one of your businesses, your startup businesses. Surround yourself with a team of people, surround yourself with an affordable legal team through Legal Shield that can help you navigate the ever uh, murky waters of running a business. So thank you so much, Lenka. Thank you so much, Julie, for allowing me to share that today. Um, if you want to know more information, I'm certainly happy to share that with you and um, see if it's a great fit for you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Tracy. And, um, you know, just you guys to let you know what we're doing here, we're building the foundation. Um, if you If you really think about it, if you have... If you're out there thinking about starting a business and you have an idea, we've talked to you about how to validate it before you put your time and effort and money into um, developing it. And then we gave you the basic foundation of the legalities, right? What needs to happen with your idea and how you actually turn it into an LLC, in corp, whatever it may be, and how you do everything legally so that the IRS here in the United States, I don't know what the entity is in the Australia, it doesn't knock on your door every single year because you're not doing something right. Now we provided you with information on how you can actually affordably access the help or answer to questions that are really sometimes difficult to find online, right? Those legal questions. I cannot stress it enough. Please protect yourself, protect your assets, protect your family, protect your reputation, protect your digital footprint. Um, the internet is a crazy, scary place. You need to have all the bells and whistles, everything in place to make sure that you do not become a fall, a victim to a predator out there who's going to deplete your savings, ruin your reputation, that if you have a vendor who takes advantage of you because you're simply a new entrepreneur that may not have the right contract in place, that they don't take advantage of you. So be smart about Every single step that you're putting in place as you're launching your business, this is a building a block concept. And now, so thank you, Tracy, again. Please, everyone, every speaker, if you can let us know, drop your information in the comments. So if people want to connect with you, they know where to find you on social media, URL, and all that stuff. would love to do that. So don't forget uh, to do that. And uh, now I am so incredibly excited 
Do you guys need a break, a little potty break? Anyone? Or are you you okay to continue? We're yeah, we're okay to continue. We're good. Awesome. I am so very excited. So let me tell you one thing. Um, right after COVID, I lost my business pretty much. And I was debating, what am I going to do? I lost my identity, right? I became non-competitive. It's the whole going back to doing a market analysis because um, I was in a digital world and uh, everyone else and their grandmother, all of a sudden were building QR codes and websites and mobile apps. And so I was not a competitive uh, provider anymore. I couldn't compete with the big guys with millions and millions in their bank accounts. And so I struggled and I decided, um, I heard this thing NLP, right? And I was like, NLP, what is this all about? And I, I have a friend who is one of the coaches. And so I registered, I decided to invest in myself money that I was like, oh, maybe not, maybe yes. I said, no, Lenka, you have to invest in yourself. You have to empower yourself to make bigger and bolder decisions. And the only way to do it is to keep educating yourself. So I enrolled and it was a life-changing decision. Not only that it, um, I found myself again. I self-discovered who I truly am. I was able to align my own personal values with what I want to be, who I want to become, with my mission, with my life, right? I really, I had a completely different view of my life and my mission after NLP, but I met Julie, one of the amazing coaches, Julie Thompson. Um, I, I was so impressed by Julie and our two other instructors that, you know, we kept in touch and I was following their journey and Julie, especially because she's an incredible entrepreneur and uh, a serial businesswoman. And uh, so I pitched this idea of doing a business together. And here we are almost a year to, uh, later, but it gives me such pleasure to introduce Ms. Julie Thompson, the founder and director of Advanced Mind Academy and a co-founder of Startup Pro, my friend. Um, who is an integral part of our team at Startup Pro Academy. And Julie, with over 20 years of entrepreneurial experience, has owned and operated 10 businesses across various industries. Uh, she's an international, international business coach. She works with entrepreneurs worldwide. She guides them through the process of building, launching, and scaling their ventures. And as an LLP, NLP international coach, Julie possesses a deep understanding of the entrepreneurial, mon entrepreneurial mindset. And she really helps her clients gain clarity on their values, goals, and targets. She helps me daily, daily, daily. We have these conversations daily. She emphasizes the importance of tracking and monitoring relevant indicators in business alongside with cultivating a strong mindset. And additionally, Julie founded her Advanced Mind Academy, where she educates individuals globally on the workings of the unconscious mind. Through her program, she helps people gain insights into their beliefs, values, and attitudes. I can attest to that. Leveraging her experience in mindset coaching, Julie assists business owners in fostering clarity, belief, confidence, productivity, and efficiency within their endeavors. That is my partner and a dear friend, Julie Thompson. So welcome, Julie. We're so excited. I cannot wait to hear your presentation. So good to have you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. And I just want to say a very special thank you to each and every single one of you that are taking your time to be here with us and giving up your weekend. Um, something that I'm absolutely so passionate about is helping people discover their true genius, um, work within their, their soul's purpose, uh, find out how do they align with their true genius uh, because who here wouldn't want to achieve 10 times more with 10 times less energy, right? And so when you can understand how to, how to unlock that within yourself, you can literally create magic. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for the presentation so far. Um, Kira, Tracy and Link, you, you all touched on some really valuable information and I want to sort of, you know, guide that into part of my, part of my presentation as well. So I do work with business owners across the globe. Uh, we do a lot around their mindset and we also understand, you know, what are, the, what are the things that are actually holding them back from their success and what are the pivotal changes that actually are crucial to their success? So I really want to share some of that with you all. So I'm going to just share my screen. Thank you uh, for having me here. 
I just want to make sure, yes, that you can see my screen. Beautiful. Okay, wonderful. So um, basically one of the one of the key elements, and I see this on a day-to-day -day basis because I actually coach hundreds of business owners right across the globe. And one thing in business, we can all expect the unexpected, right? We are going to have hurdles. We're going to have challenges. And so it's so super important that we actually adopt a growth mindset for that success, especially at the startup phase, because you will be learning so many new things when you're just starting for the very first time. You're going to be navigating things that you haven't tried before. Um, so it's, it's a process of evolution and we are designed for growth. Our, our unconscious mind truly is designed to learn more. And so there's two types of mindsets. There's a growth mindset and a stuck mindset. So when we have a new mindset, we can actually achieve new results. And so when something isn't working, we embrace that. We want to flip the script on that. So one of the biggest things that you can do as a business owner is embrace failure. And so we have, what I really encourage you to do is flip the script in your mind because who here has ever told themselves, oh my gosh, I suck. I'm not good enough. Um, I failed. This is terrible. Um, I'm sure that we've all been down that path before, but in NLP terminology, we say that there is no such thing as failure, only feedback. So it's really important that you actually take note of what are the learnings and view those fail failures as valuable insights as to what, what specifically didn't work? Why didn't it work? What was the key element that would have made a difference in that whatever it was that you were doing? So every single, every single thing that doesn't work has a golden nugget in there and a learning opportunity to identify what specifically didn't work. If we tweaked that one thing, then we can change the outcome. And so what a lot of people do is they see something as a failure and they give up on the entire process or the entire project. Uh, who here has failed at something before and then decided to give up? Now, this doesn't happen just in business. This happens in personal life. Who here has had a failed relationship or a failed marriage and swore that you're never going to get into another relationship again, right? So rather than taking the learnings from that previous relationship, what specifically didn't work? Was it the communication? Was it the, the lack of, you know, misaligned values with the other person? So there's always learn lessons to be learned and each time something doesn't work. So it's important for us to take notice and take notice of the, the learnings so then we can refine our process moving forward. So we just analyze the reasons why something doesn't specifically work. And one thing I love about uh, the journey that I'm on with Lenka at the moment, we're both seasoned business owners. Uh, Lenka has been in business now for 10 years. I've been uh, 14 years. I've been in business for 20 years. This is my 11th business model now. And we're in the first year of our startup pro business. And so we are going through, the, we're navigating the startup journey, right? And so there's this consistency where we're coming back, okay, that didn't work. Okay, that's not working. Why is this not working? And so it's this constant evolution of analyzing what specifically is not working and how do we change that? How do we create a different result? What do we need to, to include or what do we need to stop doing? So we use those in, insights to refine our strategies and improve our future decision-making. Um, so it's also important if you do run a team to encourage open communication about failures within the team. So it's important to encourage them to take risks, but also to take the lessons learned from those risks as well, because you want to help your team members feel safe to actually A, take the risk and be prepared to, to fail, but also let them know like what specifically didn't work. Let's, let's dissect this. Let's talk about it. So if you can create that safe environment, um, for, for any team members, that's going to help them establish that growth mindset as well. So setbacks are simply just a chance to develop and improve. Another thing that we can do in business is really expect uncertainty. So being in a new business can seem very overwhelming, and that's because you're learning many new things, and your brain learns over time. It's just like driving a car. So who remembers the very first time they drove a car? <laughs> Who remembers that you were probably bunny hopping down the road and you're probably really nervous and, and you're probably telling yourself, oh my gosh, what if I get it wrong? Or, oh, I can't do this. It's too difficult. And that's simply the part of your brain is in overwhelm because it hasn't done it before. And so the brain learns over time. So it's important to remind ourselves that the amygdala part of our brain relies on memory for it to feel safe. And so if it's something that you haven't done before, it hasn't got a memory bank to, to draw on those resources. 
So it's not familiar with it. And so when it's not familiar, the amygdala, the amygdala part of your brain can express a trigger response of fear or anxiousness. And so that's perfectly normal. So as long as you can recognize that in yourself, remind yourself that, okay, my amygdala is freaking out because I haven't done this before. That's why I'm feeling anxious. And then you can sort of reduce the sense of fear that you have about trying something new. So it's absolutely normal to feel that if it's unfamiliar. Growth also happens outside of your comfort zone. So I highly encourage everybody to do more things more often that you haven't done before. Um, your mind is like a muscle. So if you go to the gym and you expect a six pack abs or some big biceps, it's the same things that it is flexing your mind muscle to learn new things. So the more you practice things that you haven't done before, the more you're flexing that part of your brain and the, the easier it's going to become for your brain to, to reduce the overwhelm and reduce the fear and become more confident with experiencing that growth mindset. Does that make sense? So it's just like a muscle that needs to be flexed over time. So you've probably gone from being great at your main role. If you're just starting out and you're in the startup process, it's possible that you had a specific role. So you might've been the customer service person, or you might've been the accountant or the bookkeeper. But now when you're going into a new business for yourself, you're going to wear many different hats for the first year or two in your business. And so you've probably gone from being great at, at one thing to all of a sudden fumbling and being not so great at multiple things simultaneously. So just remind yourself where you're at in that journey um, so you can avoid that overwhelming feeling. And remind yourself also that the brain actually works on repetition. So who here has heard the saying before that it takes, you know, 21 days to create a new habit? So part of that is the unconscious mind actually does work on repetition. So the more you do something, the more the brain, remember the amygdala part of the brain is relying on the memory. So each time you do it, it's like, okay, we've got that program. Okay, we've got that program. Similar to driving the car. Now you probably jump in your car, get from A to B and you don't even remember driving, right? So you just got there. And so that's because your brain has done it multiple times. So it can do it automatically now. And so that's when you're trying something new for the first time it's trying to process and, and, and embed the memory in its bank to go, okay, we're starting here. This is, I need to do this, this, and this and that. And this is why it's also good to embrace the failures along the way and get the lessons learned so you can improve the process and improve that strategy over time as well. So another thing to remember is to be kind to yourself because you've gone from one role, if you're just in your startup um, as a brand new entrepreneur, you've probably gone from one role to many roles. So now you've become the accountant, you've become the customer service representative, you've become the social media manager, you've become the product development strategy person, you've become the technical person behind the scenes trying to sort out all the tech stuff, you've become the boss where you might have to have difficult conversations that you've not had before, you have to put your big girl or boy pants on and maybe have some difficult conversations with team members and, and bring them along. Um, you're possibly also the team leader. So now you have to motivate the team and the people in your organization. You've also become the growth strategist and the marketing expert to be able to grow the company. And then you're probably also the person that has to get your hands dirty, dirty and do the actual work, right? So previously you've gone to from a nine to five job where you get in and you get your hands dirty and you're in that role for all day, but now you're trying to do everything. And I say to some of my business owners, uh, some of my fellow business owners, because um, one of my one of my clients actually said to me, he said, "You work with so many clients, it's amazing." And then and I said, "You know, eighty percent of what I do is behind the scenes." I said, "Twenty percent of what I do is working with the clients." And he goes, "Really?" I said, "Yeah, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes when you're going into business or running a business." So it's important that you be kind to yourself, be patient, learn your strengths as you go. So start to recognize what are the things that you're great at and what are the things that you're not so great at because we are also uniquely individual. That, that's what makes it an exciting place to live in um, is that we are so unique and so individual, but we all have natural strengths and natural weaknesses. And so the more you do in your strength zone, the more you're going to be able to achieve with less. So it's important that you just recognize those strengths within yourself, recognize the stuff that feels really difficult that you're just not good at. And so when you're starting to grow and build your team, you want to identify your genius and then bring on board other people and let them fill in the gaps. Does that make sense? So somebody who does this really well is Richard Branson. He's an absolute ace at recognizing and headhunting specific skill sets and talents. And that's because he knows 
what individual people's actual strengths are based on their unique personalities and their meta programs. And he actually onboards people that he knows would be great for a specific role. And so it's important that we recognize this within ourselves. You might be really great at certain things. And I would say lean more into that stuff. Give yourself a break. Be kind to yourself. Allow yourself to operate more in your genius zone and fill in the gaps with, with external people. So who he's tried to do technical stuff behind the scenes and you're not a tech support person. <laughs> so I had an issue with technology uh, the other day and it took me six hours. I was six hours trying to solve a technical problem. That was a whole day of my time wasted. And then I bit the bullet at the end of the day and I rang somebody who was a tech support guy and he spent two hours on the same task. So that means he did the task in a third of the time. So this is why when you are recognizing your strengths, you can do things a lot easier and a lot quicker. One thing I wanted to share with you is that the conscious mind is the goal setter, whereas your unconscious mind is known as the goal getter. And what we mean by that, Kira, you shared something amazing in your presentation. You said the word uh, values. And so uh, Henry Ford has a saying, it's whether you think you can or can't do something, either way you are right because we all have a belief system that's operating unconsciously in the background. So for those of you that didn't know, we have an unconscious mind that operates 95% of the time, which produces the outcome. So this is just a, this what's, um, a quick visual representation of what's called the NLP communication model. So there's anywhere up to 30 million bits of information per second happening in the outside world around us. And we can't process that amount of information. So what our unconscious mind does is it filters the information based on our past experiences, and then it creates its own internal representation of that. So if we have a belief system in the background that's running on autopilot, and it could have happened from you know the ages of zero to seven to 10 years old. If you were at some point in your life told that you weren't good enough or you're useless or stop being so stupid, then that our, our unconscious mind acts like a tape recorder. So it records that in our, in our unconscious memory bank. And then when we're trying to do something new, it goes through that filter and that unconscious filter will say, remember, you're not good enough. And then that will become our internal representation, which becomes our state, which becomes our behavior and our results. So this is why I love to work with business owners to help them identify what are the programs that are running in the background. Because like Henry, Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can or can't do something, either way you're right because you believe it to be true at the unconscious level. Does that make sense? So if you're telling yourself you're not good enough or you're telling yourself that you can't do something, then that's what it's going to be. Now, if you were brought up in an environment where your parents were all behind you and saying you can do anything you put your mind to, do you think that you would have a different operating system to actually go out there and give it a go and try it, right? So this is what I wanted to say. And where um, Kira mentioned that values are super important, values are not necessarily what we like, but they're what's important to us at the unconscious level. And the reason why it's important to understand this is because if you're going into business and let's say your highest value is your family and then your second highest value is your relationship, and then your third highest value might be your religion, then you're unconsciously going to be doing tasks that are associated to those top three values before you will do your business tasks. So imagine if you're a parent and you're going out there and you, you've got a task that you need to do for your business for that day and all of a sudden the school rings up and says, hey, um, you need to come pick up your daughter. She's not feeling well. And then all of a sudden your husband's you know, said that he's not feeling well either and can you bring some extra groceries home and he wants soup for dinner, um, then you're naturally going to do those before you'll do the business task. And it, it happens unconsciously. And it's just because that's what's most important to you at the unconscious level. So this is what I also help my business uh, clients identify is what are their highest values and how do we help them navigate their business and build their business around those higher values? Does that make sense? Yeah, so we're naturally unconsciously, we're operating unconsciously a lot of the time. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to share, and I'm mindful of my time, so I'll try and get through uh, really quickly. Who knows what the word FUD is? <laughs> we got many people are out there operating in FUD. So it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? Now, fear can show up as um, anxious behavior. We can feel uneasy. We could feel stressed out, overwhelmed. We can feel like we're not good enough, fear of failure. 
Um, uncertainty, this is if things are ambiguous, we're hesitant, we're confused, we're indecisive, we've got a lack of clarity, we've got very unclear goals. Now, I can tell you now, I, I am a business coach internationally and I work with tons of business owners and generally when they first come on board, there is a lot of uncertainty. They don't know what their, their, their bigger vision is. They don't know how they're going to get there. There's ambiguity around the messaging, which Lenka touched on, like understanding the client. They don't have a full, complete understanding of the client. The message comes across confusing. Um, they're uncertain about exactly where they're heading or what to expect or what's the right next step for them in their journey. And when there's uncertainty, it creates doubt. So they feel insecure, they're not making, they feel apprehensive about moving forward. Uh, they're not trusting because they, you know, they haven't filled that convincer level yet at the unconscious level. Um, who here has gone into business before or, or even on that startup journey and you're feeling the uncertainty or the doubt creeping in. So the way that we overcome that is to build clarity first. So doing the research, doing the planning, doing the analysis you know, really focusing on what is our targets, what's our outcome, what is the right next step, being organized, prioritizing, having actual SMART goals. Now, SMART goals where it's specific, it's measurable, it's actually achievable, it's realistic, and it has a time frame around it. Once we've got the clarity, that is what creates the confidence. So the, the clarity creates the confidence because we've got the knowledge, we're obtaining feedback from the research and the analyzation. It also builds resilience because we know that there's no such thing as failure, it's only feedback. So once we get in the feedback, it's gonna help us become more resilient. Confidence is also coming from that repetition. The more we do it, the more confident we become. And then we become adaptable. Uh, the support network, which was mentioned um, also by Kira, we spoke about the importance of that. So once you've got the clarity and the confidence, that's when you become fully committed to making decisions. You become persistent, dedicated, committed. You've got the tenacity to, to navigate those challenges as they come through. And you become passionate about the, the journey and the process as well. And it's where you become invested in that startup journey. So by having the clarity and the confidence, this is where you become committed to the actual process. And that's what creates your successful results and outcomes. And that's what we, we do here at the Startup Academy is we help you gain clarity and build that confidence over time because you've got the support network, you've got access to all the resources and the tools, and we take you on that step-by-step -step journey which creates that clarity where you're doing the analysing, the planning, the organisation, the focus and all of those things. Um, so it's, it's a really great way to help you overcome the fear, the doubt, the uncertainty. Now, I've got one minute left, so I wanted to share with you a bonus slide. Um, and it's about balancing the feminine and masculine energetics in business. Now, some of you probably didn't even know that this even existed. So the feminine characteristics of business is about client understanding, rapport, building those connections, communication, being able to empathize with your clients. Um, it's all about the customer satisfaction, the customer journey. It's about collaboration. It's using your intuition. It's being adaptable and flexible. It's about building those relationships and the connection. Whereas the masculine characteristics of business is all about structure, strategies, money, tracking. It's the assertiveness. It's the logical thinking. It's about understanding the competition. It's spreadsheets. It's about the delivery and the structure of that delivery. And so I work with multiple men and women across the globe. And a lot of my female clients lack some of those masculine characteristics in business because they're just like, oh, it just doesn't feel aligned. And I just want more flow. And I feel like I need a little bit more spaciousness in the business, which is a beautiful concept to have. And we want to build a business that supports that for them. However, we also have to ensure that they are putting on their business hat which is bringing in a lot of those masculine characteristics and having the structure and the systems in place as well. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you uh, just to give you a little bit of insight that the, to have a successful business, you actually need both. You need the collaboration with these structures. You need the intuitiveness with the logical thinking as well. You need to understand the clients as well as have the assertiveness. So we really need for a successful business, you have to integrate both the masculine and feminine energetics of business. So hope that's super helpful. Uh, just a quick reminder, you do have everything you need already within you and stacking that with the right resources, you're absolutely on a winner. So it's simply about managing your mindset. So I hope that was super helpful. I'm going to stop share my screen. Uh, so I hope that was super helpful for all of you. Um, now I want to uh, introduce our- Julie, I have a question for you. Yes, please. 
Yes, I loved it. I love the last slide and uh, the every uh, the the feminine and masculine, right? So I I also feel and you guys chime in. Be feel free to unmute yourself and chime in. I feel like I'm the I have that feminine trait, uh, but I also have noticed that over years I realize that I have to be a little bit more her, right? And I didn't realize until now sharing that there's a thing, feminine, masculine energy and this and that. Do you feel that that's something that people learn through experience and years, or is it something that you would recommend people to actually work with someone like yourself or Star Pro Academy on discovering those traits? Um, what, what would, so if you were work with, working with me and you realize that I'm highly feminine, would you tell me it'll take time or are there strategies to teach me how to become more, you I know, love, I really do love that. And so what I would say is it's about recognizing your blind spots. And I just want to highlight language because NLP is a big based around language. And even the wording that Lenka was using, I feel, feel is very much a feminine word. So when she's saying, I'm feeling uncertain about this, or I feel like we're not moving forward, when she uses those words, it's definitely coming from the, the feminine and so if she's feeling uncertain about something or she's feeling uneasy about something, what I would, as her coach, I would question her about what specifically is she doubting or what specifically is she uncertain about? Because then we're taking it from a feeling to a logical thing that we can actually problem solve on. And the problem solving is a masculine trait or a logical, uh, the logical thinking is a masculine trait. So I love that. And and language really is everything. It's just understanding. Oh, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. And again, you guys chime in. Feel free to chime in because I will share with you that we just recently had conversations about a progress within Startup Pro. And now I understand the questions you were asking me because I was coming at you with my femininity. And you were asking me exactly question where after our conversation, I went back and I started thinking it about the problem at hand differently from the more logical space. Yeah. So this is this is brilliant. I absolutely love it. Thank you okay. for sharing. I really appreciate okay. it. Anyone has any questions about this? Anyone? Chime in, chime in? No. I not, even not love yet. what Lenka just shared there is I started thinking about it different differently and logically. So she's dropped straight from the feminine and dropped into the masculine and started thinking logically about what specifically was the problem. And so that's how we just switch from the, the masculine and feminine. Now, I've worked with a lot of um, masculine business owners as well, and they usually learn the hard way because they're all about the bottom line, the structure, the money. And so they're more... They're, they're, they're less focused on the customer's experience. And I've worked with a couple of um, male business owners who are heavily in their masculine, who've literally just destroyed business relationships with either clients or fellow business uh, collaborations. And they're just like, I don't care. It's not hitting our bottom dollar. And then they just like ruining these relationships. And then they learn the hard way because they do it multiple times over and over and over again until they, you know, somebody can help bring them into their awareness of their gaps. Um, and again, we, we have to be open to growth. You know, if somebody's in a fixed mindset, they might be just like, don't care. You know, I, I don't care. I'm only worried about the bottom line. That's a very much a masculine trait. Um, and until that person is open and just saying, actually, I could see that, you know, our clients are dropping off or I can see that we're burning relationships. Sometimes they, they get the lesson first and then they're looking for ways to improve and then they're open to the, the growth or the learning. Yeah. Um, I'm going to quickly jump in because um, the point that uh, some of the points in my presentation right at the end, I'm actually going to bring it forward to coincide with exactly what you're saying, Julie, and your question as well, Lenka, in technology. So, yeah, because I believe that technology, especially advanced frontier technology like AI and robotics, actually makes us more human. You know, that's what my belief is. I have a very optimistic view of technology. And yeah, so I'm, I'm going to talk into that. And next. Amazing. Thank you. So exciting. I can't wait for your presentation. Um, so if you've got any questions, simply drop them in the chat box. We will have open Q&A shortly. I am so super excited to introduce our next special guest for all of you. Uh, so we've got some, some uh, two ladies from Melbourne, Australia, two sisters, Natalie and Bianca Modesti. Uh, now, I've had the beautiful privilege of knowing these ladies uh, for the last two and a half years. Um, and so I've, I've 
been on their journey from very start up to where they are now and it's been such a great journey and they really have such a great balance of the masculine and feminine in their business um so they're going to just share their journey and their story with each of you so uh welcome to the screen natalie and bianca um welcome ladies <laughs> Thank you for having us. Um, we were actually just talking about that we think we have a good balance of masculine and feminine. I think I definitely started out more masculine, to be honest, because for me, I'm like planning and money and, and Bianca's like, let's do this and let's do this. I'm the dreamer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, so can you I just interrupt before? I, I, I sort of just dissed the, the intro piece. So I just wanted to share very quickly that these beautiful girls in just two and a half years in their business, uh, they have gone from literally quitting their jobs, having nothing. They, their jobs were impacted through COVID. And over the two and a half years, they've now got a monthly recurring revenue of $50,000 a month on average coming into the business. Uh, mm -hmm. They're looking after 170 ongoing clients with 17 staff members. And they're picking up keys to their brand new factory on Monday. Um, so welcome, ladies. Uh, and they, they own a cleaning company called Essence Cleaning Services. So welcome, ladies. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Um, I'm Bianca. This I'm, is Natalie. I'm Natalie. Uh, our um, jobs, I'm a musician by trade and Nat's a photographer. Obviously during COVID uh, we were impacted, our jobs weren't considered essential. So we uh, thought that we'd start a cleaning company called Essence Cleaning Services. We needed something that was going to still continue to sustain our livelihood, pay bills and provide provide for our basic needs. And we needed to aim for a business that was capable um, of operation during any potential lockdowns that happened. So we really had to think outside the box. And to be quite honest with you, we weren't actually thinking of keeping this business. We were just going to ride it through. Um, and then we, we just kept getting recommended and we thought, thought, you know what, let's just go with the flow. Um, for me, I was particularly uncomfortable with going to work for somebody else. Uh, I, I desired independence over my own future. And for both of us, we just both wanted to be in control of our own destinies and shape our own future. We didn't want someone else having that control over us. Um, and we also wanted to provide ourselves with a, a, a toxic free workplace culture um, and also provide that for any staff that we hired. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, so setting up the business it came with multiple challenges. I feel like Julie's already touched on this. Um, one of those challenges was was finances. So due to, um, you know, not working for a while, we had limited finances. So we had to seek out affordable alternatives through our network connections. Uh, product decisions. So deciding whether to go chemical or chemical free for um obviously chemical free was a way for us. So sourcing those local suppliers that provided like big drums was a bit of a challenge because we couldn't find any that offered those big drums. We eventually did find um, mm -hmm. these products that are really good. Um, marketing strategies, honestly, <laughs> we had no marketing strategies at first. We kind of just, just went full ball into the <laughs> business. <laughs> um, we, you know, we needed to... Um, strike a balance with our pricing. So we needed to have competitiveness and profitability in pricing demands from other competitive companies. So careful analysis of my, like all that, all that research we had to do. Um, and through trial and error, basically there was a lot of trial and error. Uh, we finally found our groove and we found what worked for us and what worked for our company. Um, you know, during this process, Obviously, we were going into something that we had no idea where it was going to go, if it was going to succeed. So there was a we were feeling, you know, very overwhelmed. We we're feeling excited. Uh, obviously, there was fear of the unknown. So, but in all honesty, the we had to survive. So there was no we couldn't fail. We had there was no choice. We had to we had to make things work because if we didn't, we couldn't pay our bills. We couldn't put food on the table. We couldn't, we wouldn't have a house to live in, um, you know, and I guess for us, the prospect of owning our own business excited us more. And so we just propelled through that fear. You know, we, we use that fear to fuel our desire into, you know, creating our own paths with this business. Um, and, 
each step that we took, it built confidence. It built confidence in knowing that the decisions that we were making were the right decisions for us. Mm -hmm. And if, if it didn't work, we were okay with that. We completely accepted that. We didn't see it as failure. We just thought, okay, well, what's next? How do we fix it? Um, and I guess if anybody uh, in the US knows what lockdown in Melbourne was like, it's the strictest strictest one that we had in the world pretty much. So we spent a year and a half locked in our houses. So for us, there was no option for failure at the beginning, um, but we were also okay eventually with like if this didn't work out, we were okay to try and figure something else out. There, there was, um, you know, entrepreneurship, it isn't about being fearless. It's about embracing your fear and transforming it into fuel and using it to prepare yourself towards success. You know, you really have to, you really have to embrace it. Um, you know, there was a lot of adaptability in our situation. So things were always changing. We had to adapt. Um, you know, there was a lot of resilience. So despite wanting to give up, we, we didn't have that choice. We had to adapt to every situation. Um, and, you know, resilience and adaptability, they're great traits to have in business or just in life in general, you know. They guided us through situations. They made us stronger. They made and more capable along the way. Um, you know, with facing financial challenges or market shifts, resilience and adaptability have been our saving grace in every way. Uh, and, you know, embracing every challenge we encounter is crucial because it's the key to learning how to adapt to future obstacles and any future business decisions that you make. And ultimately, it's our mindset that was instrumental in getting us to learn, to getting us through one of the toughest times. So um, for me, I did NLP with Julie as well, which has definitely, I can't explain how much it's changed my life. You know, I owned a dancing school six of oh, more than six years ago and I had none of the positive thoughts that I have now and I felt like once I did my NLP things just shifted for me you know I learned to reframe my negative thoughts I learned to get rid of limiting beliefs and you know move into positive thought patterns affirmations leaning leaning into fear of failure that I honestly feel like I don't have any fear anymore I just go into it you know, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, that's okay. And there's always a lesson to be learned. So it has definitely helped with um, starting this business and, you know, allow like being completely open to growth. Um, so I guess steps that we've taken to turn our little idea into reality, like we said, we had no expectations at the beginning. It was just a means to an end. We needed a way to make money. We needed a way to put food on the table, pay for our rent. Um, so, you know, one thing that we learned over time that was the most important was establishing uh, a good foundation. So uh, a big thing that keeps coming up and something that we speak about a lot is core values. The best thing that you can do is figure out what your core values are um, and stick by them don't sway from them. Uh, we often say it's okay to say no. That is a valid answer. If it doesn't align with your values, um, you need to stick with them because that's what's going to help with the success of your business. Another big thing is doing your market research. You know, who are your competitors? Um, what What is the pricing? You know, researching your products. Um, what is a product or a company that aligns with your values that you can work with? Um, the products that we purchase are a big thing for us is we wanted to support Australian companies, especially after the lockdown. We found a place that was in New South Wales that manufactures all their own natural products and provide wholesale prices for businesses. So that was a big thing for us as well. And crafting our uh, brand identity. So uh, we worked with a really awesome logo designer who is actually a friend of uh, my brother-in-law's and, you know, helped us pick all our colours, something that, you know, worked with our sort of vibe, our style. It, we wanted to incorporate a bit of our personality in the way that the logo was designed. Um, and, you know, we also wanted, when people saw that logo, we wanted them to think, you know, natural, fresh, um, you know, harm-free, you know, chemicals are obviously not very good for you at all. 
Um, so we wanted to make sure that all of that tied in with our, our business values and stuff as well. Um, and nav navigating marketing channels. Like we actually didn't worry about any marketing really at the beginning at all. We were just like, gun ho let's go. Um, let's get this done. Um, we did work with a business partner previously who did do a bit of lead generation for us. Um, and, you know, without that help, we definitely would have been a, a slow start for us. But, um, you know, that was the main thing that we utilised and now we're really trying to lean into a lot, um, you know, social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we keep getting told to to use a lot of LinkedIn as well. Um, so that's our next challenge for us is actually going more into those marketing ch um, channels because a lot of our clients have come from word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been very lucky in all the hard work that we've put in there. Um, scaling operations as well. Um, one of the big things that we weren't very good at at the beginning, but we are much better at now is hiring more people than we need. Um, so we hire with the aim that we are going to bring X amount of clients on board and we have these people there to to support that that demand, um, but also with the with the intention that we know that with every round of hiring that we do, we might lose one or two people because people don't always stay on board past the probation period um, or we might get, you know, regular staff that leave and take other opportunities. Um, we also uh, try and actively get as many positive reviews as we can on our Google um, Google page and making sure that our clients are satisfied. Um, Communication is a really big thing for us. We're constantly checking in with them, making sure they're happy. Is there anything that we can improve on, um, you know, how did you feel with that person that came in your house? Did you feel comfortable? You know, did you feel like you could trust them? That's a big thing for us as well, especially since we're going into other people's homes. Mm. Um, additionally, uh, another thing for uh, business growth is we, first we started off with a really, really tiny storage facility. Um, and as of Monday, we pick up the keys to our brand new warehouse. So um, we, even though, we get we do get a bit nervous when we make these big commitments like obviously we have to preempt our growth so we know that we're going to grow into this storage unit and when in the next two years when we outgrow that storage unit we're going to have to uh, outgrow that warehouse we're going to have to get an even bigger one so um that's something that you can do to keep on top of your business growth is just to pre-plan take the risk if you can afford it obviously give it a go um Struggles and sacrifices, uh, a big thing was um, financial constraints, obviously, for us, especially in the beginning. Even now, we do have to be really careful. You know, our, um, our priority is making sure that our staff are always paid, super paid. Um, we've got to take care of them. We've got to make sure our bills are paid on time. Unfortunately, we are the last people that we worry about. Um, we make sure that our staff are number one priority because we you know if we fail they fail mm. so we've, we've got to be supportive for them as well um and also just being confident in our abilities and and knowing that we're confident we don't worry about our competition essentially at all, yeah at all i don't care what they're doing they can do whatever they want we'll do what works for us um and we know what we offer so um Building trust with our clients is a big reason about why we have had the success that we've had so far. Um, a big thing is they don't feel like a number. All of our clients are valued. All of our clients are important. We we know like even down to what their preferences are when we go out and do their cleans. What are their little things that they look at? You know, one was she liked toilet roll holders polished. Don't know why, <laughs> but that was her thing. So we made sure that that was, that was something that we worried about. Um, Another thing is obviously in the early days, sleepless nights, long days, lots of tears, lots of emotional strain, no downtime, um, but you've got to push through if yeah. you, it's not all easy. So it's going to be constantly hustling. Um, yeah. Um, so for us, what worked for us is we actually go out and meet the customer. Our face to face interaction is the best thing other than online quotes, which were what we, which is what a lot of companies do. So we're going into their house, makes them feel comfortable to meet us. We build um, trust around listening to what they need. So um, meeting person, meeting the person allows us to listen to what their expectation is um, and learn what's important to them. Um, it's crucial for us to build trust and make our clients feel comfortable since we enter their personal space. 
And, you know, through active listening and paying attention to verbal and nonverbal cues, which is something that I've learned um, during NLP, um, we, we uncover our clients' underlying needs, ensuring each client gets a customised cleaning uh, checklist and, you know, precisely to meet their expectations. <laughs> doesn't leave room for error, basically. Um, we are probably going to have to move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're running out of time too. Um, so just quickly, uh, overcoming challenges that we've had, biggest one, and still to this day, will be the biggest one ongoing, finding the right staff. Um, it is hard to find good people. Once you find them, treat them well, you'll keep them. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. nav navigating business finances, which we've talked about, work-life balance, Still is a challenge getting better at it, but it is a challenge. Um, and the biggest one, especially for me, is relinquishing control. We have to trust those staff to go out and do things. And at the beginning, that was one of the hardest things that we could have done to take ourselves off those cleans and trust that those yeah. people were going to do a good job too. Yeah. Um, for us, key decisions that we decided that were non-negotiable was uh, maintaining high standards, um, quality cleans, um, maintaining professionalism around uh, with staff and with clients, consistent staff training, so making sure that they are taught to do things exactly the way that we would do them, um, using the chemical-free um, uh, products. So if a client comes to us and says, oh, no, I want you to use our chemicals, that's a non-negotiable. We don't take them on board because it doesn't align with our values as a company. Um, and making sure that the clients are accountable. So when we go and clean their house, we expect them to get the house ready and pick things up. If things are not picked up, we basically clean around them we're, because we're not a maid service. We're, we're doing the hard work for you. Um, problem solving. So any problems that arise, it's all about, you know, making quick, quick decisions and moving forward um, and embracing failure in order to grow. Um, building a team and scaling a team. Like I think we touched on this a little bit earlier, yeah. but making sure that you find the right staff is probably the most important and yeah, rewarding them in whatever way you can. It can be as little as just saying, thank you. You'd be surprised how much saying, thank you. You've done an awesome job. We, we appreciate all of your hard work, how far that gets you with a lot of people. You don't need to buy them things all the time. Sometimes a coffee. Yeah. They're happy. Like as yeah. long as they feel they're appreciated. Yeah. Um, as Julie said. Right? Yeah, which Julie's already sort of spoken about this in the intro, but um, in just two and a half short years, we've achieved lots of milestones. So monthly revenue of 50K, um, about 17 staff members. I mean, it has dropped to about 14 now, but that's okay. We're like it's constantly fluctuating um, and we're constantly excited, excited to embark on what's next. So we've already got business ideas on how to scale this and what other businesses that we can make from this one that we have now. So uh, we're very excited to pick up our keys on Monday. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, to all the dreamers, you know, make sure you do the research, the market research. Uh, the biggest thing for me is question your motives for starting a business. If you're going into business because you think you're instantly going to be rich, no. It's not going to happen. Yeah, that takes work, dedication, resilience, adaptability. Um, you know, view fear as an ally and shift your mindset from I can't to I absolutely can. That's so important. Um, invest in personal growth tools like NLP. Get yourself a, a, a um, life coach. You know, if you don't have someone in your corner like Nat, I've got her in my corner and <laughs> vice versa, invest in a life coach, even if you do have someone in your corner. Um, you know, and eliminate all those uh, limiting beliefs and cultivate positive change for yourself. It's really, really important. And, you know, believe in the in the power of manifestation because that is so important. What, you know, what you think you can manifest. Yeah. Find the people you can trust as well. Yeah. It's really important to get yourself a good accountant, um, people that know what they're talking about. Um, we found that out the hard way, <laughs> but that's what the lessons yeah. are for and something that we always do as well just to finish. Um Anything that you want is already yours. Yeah. Think like as if you've already, already yours, got yeah. it um, because you're already putting, you know, those vibes out into the, universe, into the universe. You know, we manifested our warehouse. We found it a week later. Yeah. It was yeah. already ours. So thank yeah. you for thank having you us. So much We're for so, so grateful to be able to share our journey <laughs> with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to have the girls here and to share their journey. And I just wanted to say massive congratulations to both of you um, on your success, but also on your true grit and determination and adaptability along the journey, because these girls really have, you know, you know, 
how many times have you wanted to quit along the way and just like give up <laughs> many times um, and that's what a lot of startups will go through and one thing I do want to share um, that's you know been a key element in these ladies success is really that client connection point you know they actively listen they they take the time to to really go out connect with the client listen to what's most important for the client like what's valuable to the client and they're connecting with the client's highest values and that's really been such a great success for these ladies. So I just want to say thank you so much, um, Bianca and Natalie. Uh, massive congratulations to you. I'm so excited to um, hope you girls take a moment to celebrate your win after you pick up the keys to your new factory on a Monday. Um, we're so excited for you. We're, we're rooting for you. Um, and one thing that the ladies did say, which was a, an important element there, is the manifestation. So when these girls yeah. were talking about, you know, they'd love to move into a factory one day, I challenged them to actually go out and said, why don't you start looking now? And, and so they did. They booked in the very next week and started driving around, having a look at potential workplaces. And then before you know it, within like a couple of weeks afterwards, they're like, oh, my goodness. We're, we were going to do it, you know, and they were putting all the things in place and they'd already, you know, saved up the, the money to put the, the bond down and they've already saved the money to put the first week's rent down on the place. So these girls really, they really do, you know, focus forward. They focus on what they want and then they start, you know, really putting it in, acting as if they already have it. And that truly is the power of the mind. So thank you, Amazing Souls. Massive congratulations to you. Um, thank you for spending your time. Thank here you, thank you, thank you. Amazing. Um, we have another very special guest, which I'm so super excited to bring to the stage. Um, so Nathan is here with us in the, in the Zoom. Now, Nathan is a distinguished serial entrepreneur. He's a tech startup founder. He's got a rich background in business, innovation, frontier technologies, uh, including robotics. Um, and he's basically uh, has a deep understanding of uh, like AI technology as well. His career is also, um, you know, he's some significant achievements in his career. Uh, he was the former innovation manager for the Motor Trades Association of Queensland. Uh, he won the business uh, Australian Business Awards for innovation back in 2019. Um, and he's been a runner up in the Brisbane Lord Mayor's Business Innovation Awards as well that same year. Nathan's played a pivotal role as a startup mentor um, in the innovation ecosystem builder for Queensland uh, between the years of 2018 and 2023. He's got a wealth of knowledge as well. Uh, and he was also mm -hmm. mentoring uh, the introduction to self-driving cars program through the RMIT University. Uh, Nathan is a wealth of information. Uh, he really does, you know, understand where the trends are happening, what's coming in the future. He understands the AI technology. He understands what's happening in the business landscape. Um, he's connected with lots of people across the globe. Um, and he's actually doing a trip with his wife um, in just a couple of weeks. And they're going to meet with some tech teams over in the US as well. Uh, so Nathan, thank you so much for coming and sharing your wisdom with us. Uh, welcome to the stage. Um, we're so super excited to have you here. So come on down. Thank you very much, Julie. And thank you, Lenka, for the opportunity to share um, a little bit of my story and hopefully some information that can really, really help impact, you know, the startup founders that are listening to this and, and are here live. So first things first is I just want to start this whole, you know, presentation of mine with this one saying, I believe that technology like AI and robotics and advanced frontier technologies like that actually makes us more human. And I love that you brought up the topic of the feminine, the masculine, because in the tech space, it's very, very, very masculine because it's all about programming. It's all about, you know, doing those things. And there's, and, and, and we forget about the, the human, you know, we forget about the, the soul. We forget about the heart. So as I move further and further into technology, especially for the amount of time that I spent in the, you know, the, the, the mindset, spirituality, you know, soul space that I met Julie in, I find that tech literally can actually make us more human. So I'll elaborate on that. So a little bit of my, my background. Um, I'm my family. We came from Vietnam after the war. So I'm actually a, a Vietnamese boat person, a refugee. Um, and we started with nothing, you know, growing up, watching my mom and dad do everything. And I really mean everything, you know, from restaurants, through coffee shop, through wholesaling. And when we came to Australia, mom and dad literally just jumped in and worked in factories 
to earn enough money so we can start our own shop. So I come from a very long line of entrepreneur, but the thing that I got the most was watching mom and dad do everything. It made me have the self-belief that I could do anything, anything that I can put my heart to, anything I can, you know, believe that I can be successful in, I just go ahead and do it. So my younger brother and I, we graduated in university. We did, my younger brother did architecture, construction, engineering. I did uh, banking, finance, and marketing. And together as a force, we literally embarked on doing things that we love. And a lot of the things that we love, like cars, we pimp cars for a living, you know, for over 10 years. And this is the subculture, what you saw in the Fast and Furious 1, you know, all those cars that were once cool, then became not so, not so cool, but now is cool again. So trends happen, you know, it happens like that. So moving forward, I actually believe, like I said, that technology especially what's happening right now in AI is going to actually make us more human. Let's backtrack five years. Five years ago, I was the community innovation, community manager for the Motor Trades Association of Queensland. I was fortunate enough to accumulate skill sets in my life that allow me to have a, a intersection in innovation and expertise in that particular industry in the sense that I love cars and I was in the automotive industry because we ran a workshop that dealt with cars, but I wasn't from an apprentice car background. I actually came from a banking finance, you know, entrepreneurial background. So we saw a gap in the market and we just chased it and we, we, we chased it down through all the things that I've done in my life, going from banking, going from, you know, um, construction, going from finance, right across to cars and now technology everything that I've did, the number one thing that stands out for me is the word innovation, which is doing something in an unconventional way. So bringing it back. When I was in the automotive industry, we, I was part of a lot of the um, technology, uh, um, the technology breakthroughs that was happening in the world, i.e. when micro mobility like your you know lime scooters and all that got introduced to australia like uber you know got introduced and and the movement of going from you know um um, um airbnb rather than going to hotels things like that was hitting the world and in the automotive industry electric cars were smashing the traditional mechanic you know and bring it fast forward today the biggest talk right now is hydrogen cars because can you imagine an electric car that all you do is put a fuel cell into it, which is like a battery, but it's just filled with hydrogen. And then as the car drives, the hydrogen in the car mixes with water from the air, produces water, and the only waste that comes out of the exhaust pipe is droplets of water. The, the environmental implication of that is just profound, you know? So moving forward as well, back... In five years ago, I was part of a symposium talking about robotics and AI, the opportunity and challenges to the Australian landscape. Back then, everybody was talking about teach your children how to code, teach your children how to code. But think about it. Five years later, you don't need to learn how to code anymore. You just tell Jack TTP what you need, and it actually produces the code for you. So, so one of the biggest things as you know, we as entrepreneurs moving forward to hark back on what Lenka's presentation was all about is actually about research. You might have an idea of what you think it's going to be the best thing for the world, but if you don't actually go out and test it, you don't actually go out and, and, and try it with the belief, like, you know, the sisters over there, the Modisti sisters, that believe that you can do it and then testing out the market, the challenge that you can have is that you can actually fall flat on your face. So the idea of deliberate, you know, deliberate practice and imperfect action means that you're actually constantly testing, constantly testing with a view of where the future is going. So really, really famous quote. Um, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. And this is by Reef Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. Imagine yourself at the airport and you're standing on those escalators, you know, the moving escalators. And all you do is you just stand still. You're actually moving backwards if you're standing still. So in this fast paced world, research and having connection like Startup Pro and having connection to the American market, you know, with Tracy and, 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 um, and Akira is 
essential because why? One person can't you know, have all that information, but as a team, as a community, we can actually help each other to test the market. When you go out to test markets, if you had to do it all by yourself and then engage with all the consultants to help you test those markets, you're already behind the eight ball because it costs a lot of money, it slows you down, but to be in a community like the community that's created by Julie and, and Lenka, that actually fast tracks your deliberate practice and testing. It fast tracks all the imperfect action that you're doing because you can actually test that market really, really quickly. I have been interested in going to the American market. So the first person I'm speaking to is Lenka. The next person I'm speaking to is Tracy. And then the next person I'm speaking to is Kira. But the person that actually introduced me is actually Julie. So imagine me flying to America in three weeks time, landing in LA and then trying to do this all by myself. How crazy would that be? You know? So, so moving forward, I believe that technology, advanced technology like JTTP, which is LLM, which is large language models, you know, actually is there designed for us to be more human. Okay. Let's talk chat TTP. Back five years ago, large language models were only used in the lab. The advancement and the speed of advancement is moving so fast that it's like amazing. But the, the, the fear is when you get into this, you think, oh my, oh my God, so much information. What am I supposed to do? What am I? But as we move forward, developers like Peter Kell, who developed Genius AI, he's been in the trenches. You know, he's done the work. He's, 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 he's on both sides from a developer's perspective. He knows all the right people. But from a human perspective, he knows psychology and he knows how the online space works. So for him to create a tool like Genius AI, it fast tracks all of us, you know, right now. So I've been playing with the commercial or the, 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 um, the general public's LLM, which is ChatGDP for the last 18 months. And in the last 18 months, there's been quite a few you know, upgrades already. And those upgrades are predicted in a way that, say, a year ago, I, I had like 20 different AIs that I was been using to achieve one of the things that I wanted to achieve. I'm a geek. I love books. So I always wanted to talk to the actual book, say the alchemist, for instance, right? I want to talk to the alchemist. Not the author of the alchemist, the alchemist, because to drop myself in that you know environment is just mind blowing. Imagine being part of the the landscape of what Lord of the Rings is. So I always wanted to talk to a book. So now I can, I can create my own GTP, my own large language model that specifically deal with that particular book, or I can bring twenty different sources of books together to create my own GTP. That's possible now. And now, just two months ago, they created the platform where you can literally make money from ChatGTP. So, so this is like the moment of iTunes. Do you remember when iTunes first came around? If you could develop apps back then, where would you be now? You know, so this is where we're at that intersection. Sometimes it's scary because the word AI is like, oh my God, all the bad connotation comes through. But if you come at it from a positive energy in a sense of all these tools are tools, but the essence of what, you know, I am in this world is actually still me. I use the tool to make the impact that I want to see in the world, as Gandhi would say, right? Be the change that you want to see in the world. I want to make impact. Myself and Chloe, my partner, we want to impact a million people in the world. And how am I going to do that? The fastest and easiest way for me to do that is through technology, through the online space. So I've deep dived into this space and I'm moving forward with it where AI shortcuts everything. Just think of AI, and, and this is the biggest tip that I could give everybody here. We all used to use Google to search. Before Google came along, you know, we didn't know what Google was. At the same time, kids these days, they don't look things up, they Google things. So think of the Google search function as your chat TTP, especially the ones that are connected to the internet like Bard and Perplexity and Copilot and, and, and Claude and things like that. Some of them aren't available in Australia just yet, but in America they are. 
So if you can just switch your mind and think of that as you know, your search engine, then the next level of your search engine is these things called custom GTPs or agent GTPs, where you actually can program these, let's call them bots, to do the task that you, you wanted to do. For me, I graduated with a marketing degree, but that was over 20 years ago, you know? There's a massive gap on the online space in marketing for me, but I fulfilled that gap with Genius AI. Genius AI, as an example, is programmed on eight of the most successful online, it's called VSL, video sales letters programs in the world. The founder of Genius AI, Peter Kell, actually was the person that was instrumental for Mind Valley. Mind Valley is the largest personal development platform in the world. Mind Valley success. He made a hundred million dollars for Mind Valley through his advertising campaign, his funnels, his landing pages, and things like that. So that has been put behind the scene to Genius AI, and you, the user of Genius AI. I then program my genius AI to be a digital marketing sales branding version of me. And then it actually helps me to create all of my marketing, social media, my posts and things like that. How powerful is a tool like that? Most of us don't have the time to go spend, you know, learning all this stuff, but we can have an AI that can actually help us with that. Then we can be more ourselves. We can actually go out there and see customers and speak to customers. So to wrap things up, I would love to even grab a couple of questions and answer those questions because the landscape is moving so fast. The convergence of technology is moving so quickly that as Tony Robbins says, it's not good enough to dribble the puck up you know, to the goal. We literally have to think forward and put ourselves in a position where the puck is gonna be and score the goal. The convergence of where humanity will be we need to put our mind in that and work towards that. Thank you. Any questions? I'd love to get a question. I love that. I saw Tracy nodding quite a bit. So Tracy, did you have any sort of big um, aha moments or any sort of downloads or anything that, or questions that you'd love to ask Nathan at all? No, I don't have any questions, but listening, I mean, it's just so fascinating because the, the world in technology is just moving so fast. Um, as Nathan said, that it's just, it it's mind blowing for me because I'm not, you know, I, I'm not um, technologically inclined myself because it just moves so fast. Every time I think I figured out something, it takes me six hours to figure out the next thing. So um, I, it's just fascinating to me. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Tracy. Lenka. Yeah, Nathan, my goodness, I have notes, one, two, three pages of notes on everything that you're, you were discussing. I, I'm all about saving time and all about tools and incorporating tools in, in a business so that whether you start up or already seasoned entrepreneur, you have that time to actually talk to your customers or spend time with your family. Um, you I'm not as familiar with Genius AI versus Chat GPT. Um, could you share a little bit more about the differences? Because um, you mentioned both. I do use Chat GPT daily. Yes. I will not do anything without it, right? it. I think it's absolutely brilliant, wonderful. And um, I can't imagine not having it at this point, right? Going back to Google and Googling everything and trying to write things and put them together. So very familiar with Chad GPT, but Genius AI is does not ring a bell. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so if I could just um, um, give a little bit of background, uh, Chat GPT by OpenAI is a large language model. Think of it as the library of Alexandria. All the information in the world has been put into this one library, and now Chat GPT is like the librarian of that library. But the librarian of that library has access to everything. When you go up and you ask the librarian what information you want, then they would actually access that for you. So here comes agent GTP or custom GTP. So you literally have a librarian that is specifically, you know, for you. Targeted at the information that you need, but that librarian also remembers all the information that you asked it as well. So once you give it enough information, program enough information into that, then you can set it off to do the things that you need to do. 
So say, for instance, like for me, even though I actually graduated with a marketing degree, but my marketing was from, you know, 20 years ago. I'm not up to date with landing pages. I'm not up to date with funnels and things. I can try. I can try to learn. But that is an art in itself, right? And it takes time. But now there is a, let's say, an agent, a co-pilot, um, um, uh, uh, a specific program, GTP, AI, that is specifically gets to learn me. And that's what Genius AI is. Genius AI specifically is made for direct sales, for affiliates, but it's made with all the programming behind it for um, the individual to actually run those programs. So you can literally go into Genius AI every day and you don't know what you're, us human, we're random, right? To post something every day that has a message that coincides with what we post a month ago or, you know, three years ago, it's very hard for us random humans to do. But with Genius AI, it keeps you on track in the sales process, in the inter, in, um, interconnection that you're building, the rapport building process with uh, a customer. So you can literally take it and program it so that it actually knows you. When you first open it up, it asks you 30 questions about yourself. And then from that, it actually forms a bit of a personality, a persona of you. So every time you go to post something or to write something, it writes it with your information in the background. It's like it's like the, the artificial AI digital twin of yourself, but as a marketing expert. Then you also have a thing called the genius bot that literally sits beside you as a sales you know, bot. If you have an inquiry come through, you can literally type in the inquiry of what that is and the bot would recommend, you know, um, replies to that particular, you know, inquiry. It does sales objection, automated. It gives you topics of what you can talk to the customer about as a sales objection. And understand that today, the whole game is personal branding. Who you are, and how you show up in the world is what people want to know. But if you can have help with a bunch of AIs like Genius AI to help you convey that message, to help you put yourself out into the world, you know, with design programs already embedded in it, successful online marketing and sales programs, then that's what you, that would be helping me. So I haven't completely got rid of all my other AI and use Genius AI only, but it's starting to be close. And why I'm going to America is I'm going to get to meet Peter Kell and I'm going to pick his brain on where he sees the world. So it gives me the advantage of standing and, and, and waiting for the puck to come to me before it's for the goal. And you'll come back and report out on your findings? Seriously, like I would love, I would love yeah. to share. Because I'm, I'm passionate about the entrepreneur. I'm passionate about the people that are making, you know, the changes in the world. If we can help... Yeah and every entrepreneur in this community to go out and impact, you know, an extra, you know, 10 lives that they are already using tools like Genius AI and ChatTTP and all those things, then that would be my mission. That's how I reach my mission of impacting a million people, you know. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. There's nothing more empowering than having access to information. And whether it is having access to information through your community, Chat GPT, uh, Genius AI, or we have Tracy, we have Kira. If as long as you know where to go, where the sources are, you are in such place of power in a way, right? So I, I love this. This is really, really incredible information. Thank you. And let's definitely bring you back because I personally want to hear what you learn, what you find out. So we would love to have you back. Just to, you know, to reiterate why I want to do this in this community is that I want to, you know, shout you out, Lanka, and you, Julie, for bringing the mindset, the heart set, you know, back into tech. Because in tech startup, which it was, you know, the, the environment that I was in, the rate of depression and suicide was off the charts. You know, the rate of burnout was off the charts. If every tech founder, advanced tech founder, those programmers sitting in their dark caves, you know, punching out the next version of things that are going to, you know, help humanity, if they all have a grip on how they can, you know, frame, reframe, how they can, you know, 
have a, a stronger mind using NLP practices and meditation and have breath work and all those things, it's just going to make them better humans, which makes them more impactful than the people they impact even better as well. So I want to shout you both out for bringing that into this world. And that's why I'm passionate because I spent all my time in the tech space, but then I spent the last 18 months in the heart space as well and the soul space as well. So thank you. I love so much of what you've shared, Nathan. Thank you so much for coming on board and, and sharing. And what I love that you shared, uh, what I love the most about what you shared is, you know, having AI become human and, and helping us be more human and more personalized. And um, what I also love about what you shared is, you know, you mentioned something about, you know, the overwhelm, the depression, the suicide that happens amongst business owners. Now, who here, just out of curiosity, has ever gone to do a social media post? Because that, let's face it, we've got to be in this online space now and have a digital footprint presence and sat in front of a blank screen thinking, what on earth am I going to write today? <laughs> what do these people want to hear today? Or you've gone to do your social media because it's in your calendar and you've scheduled that time slot and you're just not feeling it. Like you're in a, you're not in a, a, a creative brain on that day, you know? And so this is really, you know, how do we utilize such technology to help us, like you mentioned, Nathan, keep us accountable, keep us on track where, you know, it's like our, our, our side co-pilot that's helping mm -hmm. us stay on board. And I love it. And I love that we can plug our own personality into it. And um, one thing that you did mention about, you know, the chat GPT being a library of a wealth of resources, who here has ever done, ever used chat GPT and not liked the answer that it's given back to you? It's like, oh, that's so not my language or it's a bit icky. It doesn't sound anything like me, right? So I love that we get to personalize and just say, I want you to go to town, find me the best information and base it on these particular people who you feel more aligned with, like Carl Jung and, and you know, um, all the names that you love of the people. Um, I love it. I really love it. So thank you so much for sharing such gold. Uh, we're definitely going to have Nathan in the in amongst the community with us as well, um, just like Tracy and Kira. Um, Nathan, if you could please pop your details in the chat box um, on the Zoom so everyone can connect with you and reach out as well. Um, which I love. So thank you so much. Um, Lenka, shall I hand it over to you so we can wrap this up? I think so. I think so. We can go ahead, which is a wonderful. We have a segue into, I'm curious, should we do a Q&A or segue into our uh, boot? Uh, yeah. Does anybody have um, any questions for any of today's presenters? Please do um, bring yourself off mute. I know we've got a few of you in the online with us. We've got Stephanie, Michelle, uh, Natalie, Tracy, curious. Yeah, Does anybody yeah, you guys have any can even questions? type questions? Absolutely, type them in the comments. I'm broadcasting on my social media as well, so I'm monitoring what's going on on, on Start a Business LLC in a couple of the groups. So I'm watching for some questions if they pop up. But mm -hmm. definitely for anyone that's watching right now, we we'll probably begin the Q and A in about seven minutes, 10 minutes, the top. So go ahead and share your questions if you cannot appear live with us and we'll make sure that we answer them. Um, perfect, perfect, perfect. But you know, we we shared so much information and it's been only two hours and 25 minutes. And we literally went from um, market analysis to having access to affordable legal care um, as an entrepreneur to understanding how to set up your business. what What is this LLC thing, right? And how important it is to you and your tax implications if you don't do things right? We heard a testimonial. And when I wrote about um, some of the a key message um, that you guys shared, Bianca and Natalie, I loved when you talked about having realistic expectations when you launch your business. And um, it all goes with, you know, not putting, not misaligning your excitement for launching a business with actually excitement for having the right product when you do your market analysis. You guys talked about the importance of community and how big it is to have the right people in your corner so that you can ask the right questions so that when you feel really low and deflated, you can just say, Tracy, I need to come have a drink, talk to me, or Julie, reframe it for me. You know, I'm coming to you from my feminine side. Now, please reframe it and put it in my masculine. Like, let me see things logically versus my emotional, what's going on, right? So that's the power of community. But 
it has to be the right community. It has to be the community that you're aligned with, your values, your mission, everything that you're doing, your efforts are aligned. So though I love when you uh, ladies talked about it and especially when it comes to relevance to your incredible success. And of course, Nathan, have an AI in the corner. You know, when it first came out, I remember uh, some of my um, clients were asking, is it safe? What, yeah. what if it starts to spy on me? And do I, can I log in? And just, there's so much fear associated and around even AI and what you hear on TV and some of the crazy sci-fi movies about AI taking the world and all that. Meanwhile, we're missing what's right here in front of us, which is an incredible resource that now you even shared with us, we can actually personalize even more so and take it to the next level. So think about it from the time perspective, how much time you will be saving by having this tool by your side so that when you do have to do that, um, you know, Facebook posts or put together a teleprompter so you know what to say during your presentation, you know, use AI. I'm like, this is what I need to say. Help me stay on track. And that is what you guys saw. Everything on that teleprompter that I use for every presentation was what AI kind of helped me. I customized it, added some personal, you know, touches, and I had it as in the corner and it literally took me 15 minutes to create because I knew what I was putting together. So if I didn't have that tool available, I probably would have spent hours putting it all together. So knowledge is power, knowledge is power, community is power, and certainly understanding the reality of the world and what's in front of you is, is really key, which takes me to, we have a beautiful little segue into explaining to some of you who are not familiar with Startup Pro and the product that we're doing, because we would love to have all of you in our community. We'd love to, not only because we would love to continuously empower you and like Nathan will be joining us more and more in the future and uh, uh, Tracy and Kieran and all our amazing speakers here today, right? Empowering and, and inspiring you. But we also would love to... Um, uh, give this platform and community to anyone who's even thinking about starting a business, because this community is the one that will help you stay on track. And I'm going to share my quick little PowerPoint if I do it right. Come on. I know there's no teleprompter, by the way, just so you guys know. So I know I'm not going to mess up anything, but present, click. And here I am, Miss Tech person that I'm like struggling with these things. Can you guys see it? because I cannot see you. So I don't know what I'm doing on my screen incorrectly, but I really cannot see any of you when I do this. So hopefully, Julie, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you, but we cannot see any screen share. We've just got you up on our screen at the moment. You, oh, you see, okay. So let me try one more thing real quick, but I'll, I'll keep talking as I'm doing this. So uh, I think this will do it, right? Now you can see it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. Where is it? It's in here. All in Canva. Who uses Canva and who loves Canva? Because I do, mm -hmm. right? So this, there's like nothing better because that also is, it has its own AI now, I believe. So you can use that as well. There we go. So excellent. Can you all see it now? Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, honestly, I already did a little bit of a, a preview on what, what this community is all about. But for us, um, it's all about saving time saving money and fast tracking ideas. So for all of you seasoned entrepreneurs, there's a lot of information, webinars, guest speakers, stuff you can download that'll help you to even take your business or take your business to even higher level. Think about what Julie does, right? In her Advanced Mind Academy, NLP, anything and everything inside Startup Pro and our community is based on the principles of NLP which really helps people like Bianca and Natalie were talking about deal with the limiting beliefs and understanding yourself and allowing, helping you to align yourself, your life mission, your deep desires with what it is that you want to achieve with your goals and with your mission. And so we, um, we, we definitely want to share that because Startup Pro is not just for the startups. You know, there's a phase when you are working on starting a business, but there's also a phase when what happens after, 
you know, how, what do you do with your business once you launch and how do you keep growing? Julie and I are just now working on how do we keep growing this thing that we have developed? Um, we have gone through the launch phase successfully. We're doing amazing, but now it's really all the sales and getting people in. So we're actually sharing our own story and journey. So we're walking the talk. And that is not only inside the Startup Pro Academy, but that is what we share within the community that we have created. And we invite people to come and share their story with us. So it is an educational community where we can support each other, lift each other, and certainly learn from one another. So if you want to connect with us, we would love to have you guys. It's Startup Pro Official on both Facebook and also um, uh, Facebook and uh, what is the other thing? Uh, Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. And um, you know what's interesting now? I cannot. Oh, here it is. Perfect. Three. So when it comes to um, if you are a brand new startup, what we and this may not be applicable to everyone that's live, but maybe to some of my I see that some of the people online are watching that are actually my friends and colleagues that are thinking about launching a business. And this is an incredible opportunity now that you've heard for two and a half hours how much you can learn in just two and a half hours. Imagine how much you can learn in 90 days with us. 90 day bootcamp is what we're launching. And the first one uh, this year in Q1 is starting on March 11th. And we simply cannot wait to start because the amount of information and value that you get in just 90 days, when you literally take your idea from, um, from start to finish and you have a business plan, or if you work fast enough, if you work hard enough, if you actually do your homework, and yes, there's going to be a homework, you will have a business in the box at the end of the 90 days. So for those of you who are still debating and those of you who are online watching, I have one simple question for you. How long have you been thinking about starting a business? Has it been weeks, months, years? And why have you not, right? What's been stopping you? Maybe it was the fact that you didn't have the right support and community by your side. Maybe it was the fact that you didn't believe that you can do it. Maybe it was the fact that you do, didn't believe that you are simply smart enough, good enough, that you deserve success. All of that is addressed in our 90 day bootcamp. It is based on our Startup Pro curriculum, which was designed and developed with NLP in mind, meaning all about your mindset. It has six lessons based on or focused on the business side of it and six lessons all about your mindset. And it's beautifully aligned. So we go through the details of doing a market analysis. Lesson number one. Lesson number two has to do with your digital presence. What do you do with it? Understanding your really creating your marketing strategies and so on and so forth. And we talked about some of the mindset that Julie had mentioned already. How do you overcome the fear of this and fear of that? How do you deal with the fact that you don't think of yourself or don't believe that you are strong enough um, to actually launch a business? You want it so badly, but you don't know if you can do it. And we can all tell you, every single one of us on this call live right here will tell you, yes, you can. And we will help you see that in you. We will help you and understand that, yes, absolutely you can. We'll peel the onions and figure out what it is that's stopping you from feeling like empowered enough to launch a business. We will have two live sessions a week. One will be uh, the actual curriculum lesson when we go over every single lesson with you. And then we'll have live Q&A because you will get a homework and you will have to meet with your accountability group. That's a group of your fellow entrepreneurs and you guys will be building your businesses and you will have the support group to ask questions, support one another, test things right inside the group. Big part of doing a market research. So because we will have entrepreneurs from all over the world. What an incredible opportunity to test your idea, to validate your idea. And that's all inside the 90 day bootcamp. We will have weekly collaborations I mentioned. And also within with the 90 day bootcamp, you get a lifetime membership to um, invitations like this one. 
to some uh, annual summits that we will be running that will be perhaps over the course of two days. You know, lots of cool stuff coming up. Julie, I will advance the uh, slide for you. I am trying. This is, I'm sorry, guys. I am having continuous slide difficulties. But would you be so kind and run over uh, the... Um, Actually, we kind of covered that, right? Some what's what's inside the curriculum. I kind of mentioned on a little bit on the market analysis and and uh, yeah. digital footprint. And is there anything you would like to add to this? I'd one love too? to just run through this really quickly. And this is basically an overview of those twelve lessons. So the market analysis, as we've all mentioned, is so super crucial to the success. It's understanding before you begin on the adventure, waste the time, the energy, the money, spend a lot of money on all the things that you don't need or getting the wrong advice. It's doing the market research. And we actually have an expert, an expertly developed uh, task in there. It's a module with videos, it's workbooks. We, we do a live session on each of these with you. And we actually teach you like, what are the actual steps in that market analysis journey that you go through? Um, we give you live, live feedback as well. Knowing your purpose is a huge one. Um, and so this is why getting very clear on your why. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you just a quick story just on this point here is I was business coaching for a lady once she, she reached out to me. She saw me in a live summit like this. Um, and I did a four hour presentation for a group of 200 e-commerce uh, people. And so in that, she saw me do a presentation and then she reached out to me and she said, I need help with my business. So her business was making 40,000 US dollars per month. Uh, she had this great product online and we got two sessions into her coaching program. And I asked her the question, I said, tell me why you started your business in the first place. And her answer on that was to escape my marriage. So her marriage had been on the rocks for quite some time. Her husband was the, the direct breadwinner of that relationship. Their marriage had been struggling for nearly seven years and, um, and she wasn't making any income. So she started a business, but her underlying unconscious plan was that she was going to be set up financially so she could leave the marriage. Now, there's nothing wrong with that except for one thing. The business itself, the purpose of the business, once she's got that away from motivation, which is driving the motivation for the business, once that motivation runs out, what's going to happen? There's nothing that she's moving towards. So it's understanding the towards and away from motivation, understanding the why it's happening in the first place. And the girls, uh, Natalie and, and uh, Bianca, touched base on this as well. It's understanding your core values is a super crucial element in anything that you do. So can you imagine, though, the customer journey? Like if her heart and soul wasn't into genuinely caring about the customer, it was just about like the purpose of her creating that business was to make money to escape the marriage, then there's no real core values in the business itself. Does that make sense? So it's really important that we understand this stuff um, from, from a background perspective. And if you want a business to be successful, we have to understand what's the purpose of that business and why we're doing it. Um, creating a unique branding. This is something that I love that Lenka does really well is she understands brand voice, brand messaging, how to create authority, how to create your digital footprint, how to make sure that everything when your customers see you, hear you, um, speak of you, it all has a, a unique brand voice that's getting that's getting clear to your audience. Um, gaining clarity is a huge one. So, so many business owners that I work with, is, it's who would agree it's impossible to kick a goal if you don't know where the goalposts are. <laughs> Right. So without clarity on where you're heading, it's impossible to get there. So gaining clarity is super huge. And um, having that solid business plan. And I think um, uh, a few of you mentioned this also is having that clarity of the business. We help you break down the steps of how to actually create a solid business plan and how to also recognize and mitigate risks and potential risks and how you're going to overcome those. Um, aligning the solid core values in the business as part of that business plan as well. It's also about helping you discover your confidence, um, who he would love more confidence in business. Um, so really how to break through barriers, identify your unique strengths and talents. Uh, we are also uniquely created. Once you get to um, become familiar with your unique genius zone, um, your confidence will go through the roof because you are working in that genius zone um, more often than not. And so it's to help you leverage your talents and build your confidence as well. Uh, we also help you create your digital footprint um, develop a marketing mindset. So something that I do obviously is NLP. We understand how the unconscious mind works. And so we really teach you how to understand the psychology of marketing. 
How do you speak to your client's unconscious mind? Because it's their unconscious mind that's going to make decisions. Um, so we teach you how to develop your marketing strategies based on the different learning types out there. So the people who are visual, auditory, kinesthetic, people who are information-based. So how do you develop your marketing mindset so your, your, your marketing is consistently hitting with all of the different audience types across different platforms? Um, understanding your legal liabilities. Uh, so Tracy, I think has helped us develop that segment, which is amazing. So thank you for your input into our program, Tracy. We appreciate you. Um, aligning your values, obviously, as well. Uh, being able to work from anywhere. Um, so we, we do a, a whole thing on how do you create a, a, a effective and functional at home workspace if you are working from home. Uh, so Lenka does a full segment on there about, you know, what you need, what are the requirements, what's, you know, entry level to what might be, you know, once you're professional, what should you look at next um, in your home office space. Um, and also we do a segment on developing habits for success. So there are habits, yes. Um, and there's some non-negotiable habits that you should, that you really should have. So we really teach you a lot of this stuff throughout the um, throughout the academy as well. Uh, so Lenka, you can flick to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, I think we've gone back a slide. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. So what is included and how is it how is it rolled out? So basically, the Startup Pro Academy is in a mobile app platform, and we've also got access to it on a computer-based platform. Um, the way the boot camp works is we will do it live via Zoom. You'll have access to the digital platform, so you get access to everything you need. You get access to all the continuous education, the workbooks. Um, you'll never feel alone because we're having those live feedback sessions each week. Uh, so we'll actually sit there, run through, answer your questions so you have actual um, clarity on what are the tasks that you're doing in that step. And then we also have the feedback session so you can take the lessons learned and make the actual adaptations and modifications as we go. Um, you'll get access to a bunch of freebies, so webinars, checklists, a ton of tools and resources that we have in there. Um, you'll also get exclusive member-only um, benefits as well to bonus content that we do. Uh, we have special guest speakers that come in with our trusted providers, um, Tracy and Nathan and, and um, Kira all added so, so much value. And we've got another, we've got tons of amazing people that we collaborate with uh, that we bring in and, and share their, their expert insights with you as well. Um, there's exclusive member deals, product discounts. You also get access to a world-class community of fellow business owners and entrepreneurs. So you're not alone on that journey. You're actually going through the process with other people so you don't feel alone you get to navigate it with other people and and you get to hear their struggles their challenges their mindset their reframing and so then you're, you're on that and then you get to adapt and and take on board some of their stuff who he's been in a room full of somebody uh, uh sorry a room full of people and then you've heard a gold nugget and you're like i'm gonna take that one and then all of a sudden it's changed your mindset and you've grown at a much faster rate. So not doing it alone and doing it with a world-class community. Um, there's also networking opportunities. So you've all just had an opportunity today to network with some of our guest speakers as well. Um, you get direct access to your coaches. So myself and Lenka, we will be taking you along the journey. You'll have 24-7 support with us as well through the bootcamp. It's tons of value. There's over $10,000 worth of value in what we're actually delivering as part of the bootcamp. However, we don't expect anyone to pay that price. Uh, we want to make it super affordable for anybody who's on their journey to really actually, you know, be able to afford it first and foremost um, and, and actually, you know, empower themselves to take the step. You know, it's not a huge investment. So if you're somebody who is even listening to the recording today and you've got that business idea and you're like, you know what, maybe this year is my year, maybe it's time. Um, our next accelerator program is kicking off on March 11 for those of you in the U.S., March 12 for those of you in Australia, and we're doing an exclusive deal um, till the end of, uh, I think it's till the end of the week uh, for $14.97. So it's a one-off single payment of $14.97, or for those of you that um, want an affordable weekly plan, you can pay it off over 15 weeks for just $99 a week. So it's super affordable. You get access to everything that you need. Um, and if you're interested, uh, link is just going to um, if you want to do the self-paced version, if you're sitting there and thinking, you know what, it's still too much for me at this point in time, but I'd love to just do it myself and take myself through that, um, you can actually join the Academy, get full access to the app and take yourself through the program 
for as little as just $149. So it's super incredible. So if you're sitting there listening and just going, you know what, I want to just check it out anyway, because I think there's a few of the, the modules that I could possibly do myself. Um, we normally charge anywhere between $150 to $250 just for a one-off coaching session uh, with either myself or Lenka. So you get the whole entire program for just one single payment of $149. So if it sounds like it's for you, simply jump on it. Um, I think on our next slide, we will have um, how you can actually get access to that. Um, so you can choose the options below. I think Lenka is going to put a link okay. into the comments section. Um, yes. So, and we will drop it onto the live stream as well. So basically, if you click the link, it will give you the different options. You can either join the bootcamp uh, for the 90 day bootcamp program that kicks off in March, or there's another button there where you can just download the Academy and do the self-paced version. Uh, there's also a button that will be on that link as well, where you can contact one of our team members. So if you want to speak with myself or Lenka, uh, there's, a, there's a button there where you can just simply schedule a call and ask questions if you've got some more questions. So Wonderful. I'm in momentarily sharing it right away. That's all right. right. One last slide and then we'll Very go into cool. um, We yeah. also have freebies on the app. So even if you don't want to pay for the app, you can actually download the app um, and you can get access to some free resources straight away. So uh, there's a checklist there on how to actually start a business. What are the checkpoints that you need to go through? Um, and how to create a purpose-driven business uh, for greater success. So there's a couple of free um, resources in there. So uh, when that link comes through, basically you can just click on that and choose which option you want. So there's something for everybody, whether you want free, self-paced or come and join us on the bootcamp and we'll take you on the journey together. Um, so there's something there for everybody. Um, I just wanted to say a massive thank you very much to every single one of you for coming and joining us today, sharing your expertise, sharing your stories. Um, Lenka, my beautiful partner, uh, business partner, thank you for everything that you do. Uh, thanks for being on this journey together with me as well. Um, Tracy and Kira and Nathan, thank you so much for the information that you shared with our audience today. It's been so amazing. Um, Natalie and Bianca, thank you so much for inspiring us and sharing your amazing journey together and wishing you girls all the best success for the future of your, your journey. Um, there is, I'm just going to copy this link. Um, I think Link had sent it to me privately, but that's okay. Um, We've been doing these um, Zooms uh, for a long time. And guess what? Every single time I still bump up against my rookie. <laughs> so we have tech issues or streaming issues or whatever it is. So um, thank you so much, everyone. Um, if you know anyone in your network that is just starting out and wants access to a community resource expert insights, uh, feel free to get them in touch with us and, and we will take them on the journey. Um, so if you have any questions for any of the speakers that were on today as well, simply get in touch with us. And if you need access to their information, we can get you that access as well. Um, I have two questions from my community right yes, now. Please, let's go. Let's yes, go. yes, yes, yes. The first one uh, is actually for Tracy. Uh, how often can I access, uh, how often can I talk to the people at um, um, Legal Shield? Pardon me. Um, is it unlimited? Is there a limit? Or can I speak to them anytime? So how often can I speak to uh, the lawyers at Legal Shield? Oh, you're just on mute, Trace. I'm saying some good stuff. Um, you can reach out to them uh, every single day, uh, if you like, uh, a couple times a day, because maybe sometimes you might have a question about, you know, one thing, and then you might have a question about something else. So it, it's, um, you have access on an unlimited number of issues, whether it's, you know, for your business. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Tracy. Is there, so if they wanted to, uh, can you drop again your information in the comments? So sure. if people are watching live right now, they can um, ask you some follow-up questions just to be sure. Um, ladies, Bianca and Natalie, there's a question for you, ladies. Um, someone's asking, first of all, they're sharing uh, incredible uh, success. Uh, so proud of you. It's actually someone who's thinking about launching a business and uh, similar um, industry. What is your biggest advice? What is your biggest advice? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I guess if 
especially like we said earlier, find yourself a really good accountant, somebody that can give you good advice, make sure they're setting up systems properly. Um, they're easy to use. Um, we got ourselves a bookkeeper as well so that we remove those tasks from us. They make sure that everything's recorded well and properly and then we get to worry about the growing and recruiting aspect of our yeah. business. Um, First and foremost, yeah. do the research. Yeah. You really want to know um, who your competitive, competitors are. You want to know what separates you from them um, because there are many cleaning companies and they all offer the same thing or majority of them offer the same thing. Um, what's missing from them that you can use as a, as a selling point? Um, That's really important. Another one, definitely know your worth yeah. as well. Um, you know, the amount of times we get um, some clients that come to us being like, oh, you're really expensive. This other person charged $30 an hour. That's fine. You can go with them. But this is yeah. this is why we charge what we charge. This is what we offer. We treat our staff well. They are paid well. Uh, we have, you know, insurance. That's another big thing. Make sure you have public liability in case anything gets, you know, damaged. Um, for Australia, I'm not sure what it's like in the US, but we have something called work cover. We have to pay for workers' comp insurance. Make sure that if our staff injure themselves on the job, they're covered. Um, and I think the most important thing is treat your clients not like a number. Treat them like a person because for us that's a really big selling point. We know every single every single client that we have, we know them by name. We save their details in our phone. When they call us, it's like, oh, hey, Melanie, how are you? And it's a surprise for them because they're like, oh, oh, hang on, they know who it is. So um, yeah. really treat your clients like they're a person, in, not a number. Invest in those relationships. Invest in the relationships, yeah, yeah 100%. Then you'll have long-term clients that will stick by you. We've had people that have been with us the full two and a half years and that continue to recommend us to their friends yeah. because they trust us. So I think building that trust and investing in those relationships is also one of the most important things that you can do. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, I have a question for Kira, Kira, Kira. Um, somebody's asking about um, uh, the difference between going and using someone like you for services versus going like on sunbiz.org. So I believe it's a Florida person. Uh, so would you talk a little bit more about the support that perhaps you would offer versus them trying to look up and find the information on the internet to, uh, I guess, incorporate? Oh, um, <clears throat> definitely. So we have lots of partners. So our business does, you know, certain things very well. Again, we, we say we choose the things that we are passionate about. Um, so in our particular business, uh, we don't actually file any forms to help someone create their business. We have strategic partners that we have that. We so we have CPAs in different locations that we recommend, um, tax professionals recommend Legal Shield with Tracy for legal matters and things like that. Um, and we do specifically a lot of HR, payroll, bookkeeping, um, CFO type work is what we specifically do. Um, I recommend, you know, you can do it on your own. And when you, when you're strapped for cash, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Get mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. Pick and choose the things that are the most important. I, I can't, you know, like, uh, like um, Nally said, accounting is a really crucial thing. Having that, that CPA, that tax professional is really key. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's the person that can really help you do a lot of that, ta you know, the tax portion of formation. So yes, you can go do it on your own. But going with a person that can really dig in, ask you questions and help you educate you to make a good decision is going to be really more, you know, really valuable. Yeah. 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 And, and you wouldn't believe how many times I get asked this question. I'm sorry, guys. I have my cat is hungry, I guess. Um, he's She's like all over the place, all over the screen. I apologize. Live broadcast, right? So no, I, I love that. All of those, all of those questions. And uh, Nathan, for you, I have one more personal question, actually, on behalf of my clients. If they were, okay, newbies to this whole um, AI, chat GPT versus, um, versus the genius AI. Uh, think about someone that has absolutely zero experience with anything at all. How would you direct them? 
So the first thing that I would probably say is that everybody uses Google. Yeah. We all yeah. use Google. So instead of using Google on everything that you are thinking of using Google for, use JetTTP. So you can get a free account and that only gives you access to the 3.5, which is a, uh, a language model that was older, but it's a bit faster and it doesn't have all the information because all the information only goes up to like 2021 kind of thing, but it just gets you moving. So any questions that you have with you know, Google, just chuck it in chat TTP. At the same time, Google has just launched and it, I'm talking like in the last you know two weeks, they're Bard. Bard, that Bard Gemini, if you just search Google and just put Bard Gemini, it's their is, new is language. Is it B-O-B or B-O-D? A B-A, B-A-R-B, a B-A-R-D, sorry, Bard. Oh. Yep. Just jump into Bard. At the moment, they actually have two months for free as well, and you don't get charged to the third month. Try that one because it's brand new. It's got all the features of uh, JetTTP Plus, and yeah, and you can try it right now. You can even, um, type in, get me an image for my business, you know, and you can actually outline what your business is and it actually give you a, 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 an image of what it thinks that you're trying to say, and then you can adjust it. So instead of using Google, use Bard, use JetTTP, and just experiment and play because you get used to it. They talk about um, a prompt engineering of how you actually speak to the um, the GTP to get the answers that you want, but just play, play. I think playing is the, the fastest and, and come at it with curiosity rather than coming at it with fear. So any fears that you have about AI or technology or anything like that, just identify that and actually just change it to curiosity. As right. soon as you curiosity, it allows you to dive a bit deeper and removes the fear. And then you'll be pleasantly surprised. Did you not love how beautifully uh, Nathan just reframed uh, fear into curiosity? That was beautiful. So beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Stephanie, you've been such a beautiful listener. Would you like to share anything? Ask any questions, anything at all? Uh, sure, I have downloaded the app a few months ago, months ago as one of your beta testers, for in and, and just being here today and seeing everything put together that was on the app and meeting all the presenters, it was great. I thank you for having me. It was great. Really Beautiful. So, yeah. Beautiful. And even if you have questions, post later on, connect with us on social, download the app. We're there. There's a live chat inside the app. Any questions you have, you or anyone else inside the live chat we're always monitoring we get pop-ups so we know people are asking questions please feel free to connect with us we'd love to uh support you on whatever journey journey you're currently on great to have you thank you so much jules um thank you so much everybody again and just the one final piece i want to add to that and i think nathan you touched briefly on this um is having access to so many experts in one place it's really going to save so much time and money and energy and effort. Uh, who here has gone through the, the navigating the journey and just thought, oh, where, who should I reach out to for this? And where am I going to get access to this information? So literally, yeah, jump into, into wow. the Startup Pro, download that app because Lenka and I are connected with so many experts across the world in different niches from legal team to financing to tax experts to as we've seen from Nathan, you know, uh, the the tech experts. Um, so realistically, if you're looking for something and you want that that piece of insight, just, you know, it's like having a, a business guide in your pocket of experts who you can just reach out on the live chat and just say, hey, Lenka, Jules, do you have anyone in the network? Can you get me some insight on mm -hmm. this? Um, and we are also constantly bringing in new people uh, to do guest speaker spots with. So it's something that we do. And um, the theme that Lenka and I are really 
uh, you stuck on for this year is the no BS. It's very authentic. It's real information uh, because there's a lot of stuff out there, which I, I feel like we're, we're moving past it this year, which is refreshing. Um, but a lot of people sharing, you know, the, the image of them standing in front of their Ferrari and saying it's easy, jump into business today. And, you know, uh, but it's not that easy. It's, it's genuinely, there's lots of hurdles um, and challenges that you will navigate. And it's just, um, you know, learning how to do them easily, effortlessly. What are the learnings? How can you maintain a strong, positive mindset throughout that journey as well? Uh, Nathan, did you want to, um, you had your hand up? Yeah, yeah. So um, excuse me for jumping in crazily like that, but I just quickly jumped in and looked up BARD. It's actually just been changed to Gemini now. So Gemini is the large language model that Google has been working on for forever. And they they had BARD, which is like their experiment, their testing to see how if there was a demand for you know their own AI. And now they just changed it. The media release was like from about five days ago that it's called BARD is now Gemini. So if you look up gemini.google.com, um, that's... Yeah. Yeah, that's the new that's the new large language model from Google. How crazy is now, that? Think about this. In two seconds, we learn something that we would be looking for online forever. It's like, where's this? Who's this Bart? Where's this Bard misspelling? <laughs> right, like typical Lenka Brady misspelling everything. That's just my thing, people. Um, but, but you guys are my people, and I know you understand the struggle, and I know I can be real and authentic and share things like they are because this is who I am, right? Mm -hmm. So I love, love, love all of you. Thank you so much for being here and for enlightening us with your wisdom, time, so precious, and helping us really start this year on a high and uh, serving our community. And I really look forward to working with every single one of you and continuing this conversation and having more of these summits and, uh, and enriching lives and helping people feel amazing, empowered and successful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your weekend ahead and uh, wishing you all massive success on your journey as entrepreneurs. And let's do this together. Let's continue to support each other and have an amazing rest of the day, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. <laughs>